Jump in. Welcome to Nerd Church. We are going to pick up where we left off uh, last time. It's been a minute in the real world, so as a reminder, uh, last time was not quite a shopping episode, uh, but it was uh, typified by your party uh, doing two main things. Uh, first, strongly considering going into the poop business. <laughs> yeah, that's right. uh, a lot of energy was put into theory crafting and strategic planning <laughs> around uh, the possibilities of Orak dung as an industry. Uh, in the end, that idea was abandoned, uh, or at least put on hold. Uh, and the rest of your time was spent exploring the town of Featherwan, uh, including some time spent at the uh, tavern Chonker's Rest, where you uh, encountered a green dragonborn trader uh, named Choda Clanless, uh, who brought some news from the north. Uh, you also uh, loaded up a wagon with Arak Dung and contracted with your now friend Marks to return uh, to Salt March Landing uh, to kind of go full circle and complete your mission and poop related side quest. Um, so, uh, I, there also at the very end was a little bit of. Paying of old debts back and forth among the party oh, and uh, settling up, yeah. cleaning up some <laughs> some money stuff, uh, but in the end, uh, I believe you were uh, preparing to pack up and roll out. Is there anything uh, else that you wanted to do in Featherwand, or are we? Uh, I think that we ended just as we were meeting for breakfast, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Marx is is. Outside the city, awaiting your uh, party. So I do have one final thought on Auric Dung. As it turns out, last night I did a small experiment and I, well, didn't actually complete what I needed to, but I have the notes and I know how to do it. As a grand idea, and just something to maybe give us some passive income, something that we wouldn't have to really focus on, because uh, ultimately we would leave Lily in charge of the business aspect of it. But I found out how to refine auric dung to make an oil. And we could do that here in Featherwand, leaving Lily in, in charge. And uh, ultimately, I mean, yes, the income would be nice, but the bigger idea is that if this goes the way that I think it would go, it's easier to transport auric oil instead of auric dung, nicer if we could bottle it. But then we have somebody who's in business and can feed us hmm. information. Thoughts? I just like the, Lily, we have a great opportunity for you. You're gonna be making poop oil. You're, you're our poop oil. <laughs> yeah, how does Lily oh, feel about it, number one? Uh, number two, how much, how much does it cost? Oh yeah, investment, yeah. I'm sure there's an upfront cost. Uh, I have, I, Literally came up with this idea last night. Didn't uh, didn't put any more thought into <laughs> I'm not it other than ideas. other than the science of it mm -hmm. and the idea. So we would just have to think about the business side of it, the logistics, and see if it's something that we could actually put into place. Mm -hmm. But you're sure on the science side of it? Well, I didn't actually complete the oil, but I know what I need to do to make it. And you have those things here? Uh, I did it with a simple chemistry set last night around a fire. I mean, I'm always interested in passive income mm -hmm. since we seem to be squishing by. <laughs> always. <laughs> 
Okay. Um. I mean, so what does Lily think? Lily here. Okay. Lily having breakfast I with us. Think she's already left us, right? Isn't she here, but not physically with us at the end of last episode? Yeah. So, so Lily, I think, is attempting to get work at the rest, mm-hmm. um, and likely. Well, you tell me, but she didn't have a place to stay in town, so mm-hmm. either and she has no money. So right. either you paid for her to stay at the Chunkers Rest. Right. Or she was left to figure out something on her own. And she's pretty independent, so like, you know, we had that conversation, she was going around town talking with people and figuring out what work she could do. Um, <clears throat> but Lily is not opposed to anything. Like she's not above anything and she's free in this space. Mm-hmm. Like I think she would be very open to it. Well, and ultimately she would be the boss. Yeah, her own boss. Her own boss. She has customer service skills from having to navigate that, so she has to be our own. And she's a trusted friend. Mm-hmm. Trusted. So we're not only setting her up for success. She also has experience dealing with flammable liquids. Right. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> yes, she does. Yes, she does. I just, I think that it ultimately, I mean... I am just looking at the positives here, but it solves problems for us. It, I mean, gives puts some money in our pocket. It solves uh, a, a job for Lily. Um, not an easy job, mm-hmm. but a job nonetheless. And we don't have to own the animals. We can just get the orc done mm-hmm. and process the oil. Set up the oil refinery. I would imagine that once it's found out what we are doing, that we'll have to um, give a little kickback to the stables for the orc dung. But ultimately, um, ultimately, this could be us eventually bringing our own orcs down. Uh, I mean, that's all farther down the line. Problems to solve. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we're in agreement. Should we just give her kind of like a chunk Teach of change? Teach Lily how to make yeah. it? Instructions. Yes. I'm Money. And a place. So uh, before, uh, I mean, yeah, I guess we would have to find out. Well, either we leave Feather One now and we perfect the science. And come back. And come back and establish, or get the funds that we need to establish. Maybe <laughs> even selling the idea to our... Uh, investor. So I will tell you just just in the interest of game mechanics. You you would know, Potom, that in order to not only finish these experiments and build create a process that is both reliable and consistent, scalable, but also to scale this up into some production because you did this with a very small amount, mm-hmm. right? Um, that you're talking about a a project that probably extends into weeks, not a day or two. Right. Right. So that's the that's the real decision here game wise. If you want to invest weeks in Feather Wand right now, or if you want to go finish up what you were doing and come back at some other point. There's nothing keeping you from coming back, and I don't have a preference. Mm-hmm. You want to set up shop here? I, I say that, I say that we Go and complete our mission. Yeah, air doesn't and, com- and complete the science, yeah. and then we'll come back and establish yeah. shop. We'll, we'll, and we'll Probably helps also because then you will actually have money. Right, right, right. That is yours. Whoa. Yeah. That oh, is your money. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, and the big question is too: Do we do that other side job too for um, Mach Two? Um, is that the blackmail one? Yeah, the blackmail one. Mm-hmm. Because we do have the possibility of getting a little more chunk up. Mm-hmm. Wait, which Especially a little bit more money. Which blackmail one? We don't uh, know. Not for about a, that's it. not for Mach 2. Oh, not for Mach 2. For, um, what is that for? Wadi Wadi. That's for Wadi Wadi. Oh, right, right, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The other, the other above board job, sort of, that he's looking for. <laughs> the yeah. above board blackmail job. <laughs> yeah. Well, to, again, as a reminder, he's not paying you to blackmail someone. He's right. paying you to protect someone from blackmail. Yes. Totally. To stop the blackmail. <laughs> stop the blackmail. Oh, that's where we went wrong. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's these are muddy waters. Uh, it's understandable. I th- yeah, well, we want to be really explicit about what he's asking for. 
Because we've been on both sides. Here. Oh, whoops. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's too. a great idea. Let's do that with uh, with this in mind and come back this direction. Yeah. Yes. I wouldn't right. mind spending some more time in this area. And I got some. Yeah, I have something in mind for that blacksmith back in uh, our former home. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. And you know, because I've had more personal conversations with Lily just since we got here, and like with the crossing. One, she is not interested in going back to where we came from. Yeah. So she's fine setting up shop here and whatever that looks. She's super grateful that she gets to lead her own life and she's not afraid of like the unknowns of it. And so I feel like whatever we do present to her, as long as it's in this context of her like having a choice and being able to be here, right? She's gonna be fine with it. Well, we'll get even give her a little food. money to sustain herself and maybe poke around here and see yeah. logistically. If she can come a up good with the space, or yeah, she is. She is. Anyone who can well, make a flaming we, booze drink. That's maybe what we leave Willie, Willie, Lily with. Willie, Lily. Uh, <laughs> while we, uh, while we depart, is that she finds a place close to the stables that mm-hmm. could possibly house this Operation. venture. Yeah. Okay. You give her. Should we give her a few gold pieces to? Sustain herself. Yeah. Uh, while we're gone. So I don't think we need to necessarily role play this part out, but I would say Lily's around. Okay. So it's, she's not hard to find. Again, she probably is in the tavern uh, at this point. If you're down having breakfast, mm-hmm. she would be here still talking to uh, the staff and the owner, trying to work out uh, an employment situation. She's not going to go far from you while you're in town. Oh. Like she knows it may be a while before she sees you again. Uh, so it's easy to flag Lily down. You can fill her in on. Kind of your idea here, and it, do you want to give her some cash? I'm yeah, going to give her five gold pieces out of mine, just to, because we don't know when we're going to be back. I, with her. I, would, I would also be willing to assist in that by giving her five gold pieces. So we got Same. ten, fifteen. Oh because man, looks like we're doing five gold pieces. You're like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> You do not have to. You don't, like, uh, you don't, don't no, feel that no, pressure. No, 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 Ares, no, Ares, going to go with the boy. Five gold pieces. Also, we got, so we got 20, tw- gold 20 gold pieces for Lily. She can live off track. of. She can start kind of building her network yeah. here. All right. So Lily is going to... Uh, also, Lily, the general idea of this, let's keep it on the down low. Yeah. Lily's good at that, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she can be discreet, for sure. Yeah. Plus, at this point, I think she really has no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so... She's like, first time she's heard of Orok Dung. She's like, cool. Certainly doesn't understand the science. Uh, so I don't think she she was like, don't worry, small gnome. There's not, I'm not going to talk about this. I won't, little guy. <laughs> don't, don't you worry. Uh, but she knows to kind of start looking for some. Kind of, <laughs> Get off of me. She knows to start looking for some type of like warehouse or, you know, like thinking of possibilities like that. It's yeah. a very small town, but. You know, uh, yeah. thinking about a place where she can, she could live with poop. And twenty gold is certainly enough to uh, secure her mm-hmm. a safe place to stay for a while. Uh, yeah. It's not it's certainly not money she can use to like start setting up a shop or anything no, yeah, like that. Right. But it's going to keep her safe and comfortable, probably unless it's a long time till you come back. Uh, we'll send a money order or something if necessary. <laughs> right, 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 right. Courier a jewel. Yeah. Um, all right, very good. So Lily's set. They always say, "Don't send cash by your homing pigeon." Right. <laughs> Smart. Uh, now that Lily's set and your idea is at least uh, in the water, what's next? I think we head back. Let's right. Go find Marks. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, you were gonna head out of town, which means I can switch our ambiance music here. So we're going back on the ship. To- to wilderness travel. First, we gotta travel to the ship. Right, but that is our ultimate goal, right? Yeah. I think so, yeah. With a with a cartload of dung. All right. So, outside of town, you uh, <clears throat> it is still fairly early morning. I think, um, generally speaking, we've agreed that this group is a majority early risers, and so I would guess your breakfast was not uh, really brunch, but more true breakfast. Uh, and so I'm going to say it's it's still fairly early morning by the time you get outside of the um, 
outside of the village of Feather One, and you see that Marks, also an early riser, has already cleaned up his camp. Uh, the soup pot is scrubbed and put away, uh, and he's not sitting on his wagon, but the wagon is uh, hitched up and ready to roll. Uh, and so when he sees you from a distance, he gives you a, a wave of greeting. Uh, and the um, time of day is probably 8.30 uh, as you walk up. He says, I'm ready to go early, I see. I like it. We can get a lot of miles behind us. Sounds good. Let's go. All right. <coughs> so... Uh, you load up and head out. Uh, this is, again, the reverse of the journey that you just recently took. So uh, almost immediately as you climb the hill, uh, you re-enter the uh, broad forest of low pines, uh, low scrub pines that you uh, progressed through. Um, and you're going to spend uh, quite a while <laughs> navigating through that area. Um, I'd like... Uh, you to decide who is going to be keeping lookout, if any, who is going to help Marks navigate, uh, and is anybody else doing anything while you uh, travel today? I Got a like full day of travel ahead of you. Keeping a lookout, I just feel like elf eyes have a pretty wide range, sure. and Pando's like getting real comfy in these forest settings. All right, I like and it. So walks. Pando's on lookout. Mm -hmm. Who's going to help Marks? Um, I'll help Marks navigate. Yeah. I was going to say, I'll help Pando on lookout. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was going to, well, maybe you don't need somebody to go and look at, but I was going to have air scout ahead. Yeah. All right, that sounds good. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. Um, air, I'm going to ask you to make a survival check. You bet. If you do well on that, it will grant Pando advantage on her perception check. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Pressure's on. No pressure. <coughs> Just keep me alive, friend. You ask air to look at Oh, yeah. I don't. I don't Thanks see it yet. Oh, you don't see so it. It hasn't popped 20. up yet. Oh, this is good. It's uh, it's twenty. It's a twenty. Well, twenty is very good. 20. All right, very good. So, um, <clears throat> what a waste. So air, air is uh, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. Air is out ahead, uh, kind of scouting the trail, and uh, and bringing word back to you on a regular basis, Pando. Um, so I would like you to make a perception check at advantage. Okay. Uh, meanwhile. Potum, uh, why don't you make a, a wisdom check? And you may make that at advantage because this is you assisting marks, actually. And that's rolling twice and taking the... The highest. Mm -hmm. Panda. 22. 22 is excellent. You guys are rolling some... 15. Mm -hmm. 15. All right, very good. So everybody is... In peak form uh, mm -hmm. this morning. Uh, He's at the, breakfast. I was gonna say, yeah. it turns out establishing a good base is right. worth it. Yeah, <laughs> solid breakfast, it matters. Um, also, I didn't mention this, but um, Feather Wand has really good coffee. Ooh. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, then we should go back. Shoot, <laughs> why are we leaving? <laughs> right. So, uh, those little pewter mugs that I told you about are the little pewter chalices mm -hmm. in which they serve that sort of. Um, milk-based mm. cocktail or, or liqueur. In the morning, those are used to serve a thick, almost syrupy sweet, like mm. Moroccan coffee kind of a deal. It is dark, it is bittersweet, uh, and it is almost viscous, the level of um, kind of saturation, is that a word I would use here? I don't know. but. Uh, but it is damn good. You've had things like it in Chukip, like imitations, attempted imitations, because some of the tabaxi there miss it. But this is very much a tabaxi thing, and to have it from the mainland in a true tabaxi village, for some of you, it was a mind-blowing experience. I don't know who all is a coffee drinker in this group uh, of characters, but if you are, you're gonna think about this. I just had a thought of, um... And I actually think about this from time to time, the sounds that Potom makes when he's eating, especially <laughs> eating things that he likes. That, uh, that, uh, that um, otter noise, oh. when, you know, when otters are eating. That, oh. 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 Like, and that when he was drinking this coffee, it was almost like he was, I mean, That's sort of great. purring 
as uh, I mean, just no. kind of a constant like, mm, oh, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you would not have been the only one at breakfast purring, probably. Right. Uh, it was a room full of, of many people who were purring through their. their just breakfast. imagine that, like the party as we're eating. It's constantly like, that guy is loud. <laughs> it's just a constant background hum of bottom noises. And he has zero, he's zero consciousness of oh, yeah. the nope. fact that he's it doing just, it. It, yes. it just happens. Maybe like a little yeah. bounce. It's, it's just... ringing in my ear. I don't... If we're like sitting, <laughs> if we're sitting around like the campfire eating rations, it, it still happens, but it's not like as vibrant as it is when he like, we're sitting in a keep, like eating oh, something. Great. Or an inn that is eating something that is like fresh and hot. And, yeah, <laughs> I like it. So, uh, so as you travel, everybody is fresh, alert, in kind of in peak form. The weather is good. Uh, the visibility is clear. Uh, Marx is thrilled. You know, he's the grumpy old cat that's uh, always assuming the worst about a trip, and he just kind of you almost catch him smiling or humming to himself at times. He's so pleased with how smoothly things are going. And you make incredible time. Uh, so in, in half a day, you fly past the uh, area where you camped and even make it out of the uh, scrub pine forest and back into the marshland. As you continue your journey, uh, Marx uh, encourages you to pause for lunch. Uh, which you do. I don't know if there's anything you want to do during that pause. It's certainly, you don't have to, uh, but... Can we just look around? Can I make a perception check? Yeah, go nice. for it. How much time are we pausing for lunch? Uh, it's really up to you, but Marx was just looking... He's thrilled that you're making such good time, oh, so he was looking to just, just stop, get a snack, mm -hmm. give the oh. uh, oxen a chance to rest and get moving again. Okay, was just going to kind of sit there and hang out with Marx. I think that uh, Potom will just kind of scour over his shitty notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. Do you have an extra dice rolling thing? I, I yeah, rolled yeah. Uh, electronically, I do. but I do want to roll my dice. I'm excited about it. Yeah, you got pretty dice. Gotta use them. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. All right, I so did, a perception check. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, so again with a ten, uh, this is. This area is at least familiar to you. You know you're coming up, you've paused probably, depending on your pace, half an hour to an hour short of the ruins where you were ambushed okay. uh, on the way out. So you haven't quite reached that spot yet, but you know it's coming up soon. Mm -hmm. uh, the weather continues to be good, but you are um, now into the early afternoon. The sun has moved across its zenith and is heading down. Um, so if you re remember Marx's uh, desires from last time, you're probably four hours from him wanting to set up camp. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, even though you've made good time, you're certain you won't make it to Salt March Landing today. There's just no, no way to do that. But we'll make it past the place where we were ambushed. Well past, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't match those. Be no, back. no, just no, no. Certainly not them. <laughs> not them, yeah, but some or other they are there and they see us. They're going to yeah. be one of these, like, Ugh. If they are there, they'll be undead. Yes. And you will have a different issue on Yes. Mm -hmm. yes definitely. No, uh, I'm just wondering yeah, about that. Yeah. In all the ways. Uh, huh? Panda so, that's the one's neck. Yes, Panda did. Uh, oh, so, that's right. right there. <laughs> their trachea, I believe. Yeah. ripped their trachea. Right out of out. Tore it, just tore it, removed it. The <laughs> trachea. Yes, yeah, it was a slightly brutal trachea. <laughs> back on the road. Trachectomy, actually. But, sorry. All right. uh, back on the road, you. <laughs> what is it? Oh, come on now. I'm not paying for YouTube just so we can have uninterrupted no. background music. Um, <laughs> Back on the road, uh, you continue to travel and uh, very shortly, as I said, approach the area where the ambush took place. Um, I would say, Pando, especially with your passive perception um, and as you're getting a little more attuned to this space, uh, it seems clear to you that no one has passed this way since you did, uh, which I don't know if that would surprise you or not, mm -hmm. uh, but 
Uh, everything kind of is undisturbed, with the exception of the corpses uh, yeah. that are still here that have clearly been visited by uh, scavengers. Uh, so they've been they've been picked at a bit. There's no eyeballs uh, anymore. Some of the softer bits look to have been removed. <laughs> Uh, and the smell is significant uh, as you roll through. Clouds of flies uh, kind of pour up off the bodies as the noise of the wagon rumbles past. Um, but that's about all uh, you see here. So unless you want no signs to... of danger? Doesn't uh, appear to be. I, again, you've got a scout out ahead, you're, you've got eyes all around, and it doesn't seem that anything is uh, here to disturb you. Uh, that threat, well dealt with. <laughs> we might have a scout out, but they're going to smell us coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't, what direction is the wind going? Right. Right? Um, another hour or two down the road, as the sun is starting to now set behind you, uh, I would say, uh, air, mm -hmm. you hear something uh, ahead and to the left of the trail and you kind of silently alert Pando and Pando from your perch up on the wagon uh, you notice it first there is a a rustling through the marsh grasses uh, that is there's a V-shape coming towards you mm -hmm. from that direction, from the left side of the trail. Um, not fast, I would say more erratically. It's coming directly towards the sound of your wagon, uh, but in sort of fits and starts, uh, moving quickly at a moment and then slowly and then stopping at times and then moving towards you again. It, uh, I would say for both of you with those very high perception rolls, you would intuit this, whatever this is, mm, maybe is trying to be quiet, but is not succeeding mm -hmm. uh, at being quiet enough. Do we sense a threat? Hard to say. Mm -hmm. There is there is a creature moving towards you erratically, uh, but directly. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have a moment to react to that before mm -hmm you see what this is. And how far is everyone else in relationship? Because Air and I are obviously like the ones on the lookout, but. So, I mean, you're up on the wagon next mm -hmm. to Mark. Mark's that's been established. I'd say you're 15, 20 feet uh, ahead on the trail. Uh, Maybe just walking in front of the oxen. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. I am seated in the hands next of the exocomp. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. <laughs> and how far away is this creature from us right now? Uh, you've you've got probably a twenty foot advance warning, so it's probably it's twenty like, feet off the trail approaching. It's like in you. grass, you said. Yeah. So on either side of the trail at this point, that's a good good question. On either side of the trail at this point, you are looking at marsh as far as the eye can mm -hmm. see, um, and this this whatever this is, it's coming out of very tall grasses. Uh, seven to eight feet tall. Uh, you can also hear some splashing when there's low water in this part of the marsh, probably a, a foot or two deep of kind of swampy water. Uh, the grasses are patchy, but this creature is coming out of a fairly large patch of that grass. So there are places where you can see to the horizon, but uh, there are big stretches of cattails and marsh grass and uh, kind of scrubby, so a few of those scrub pines here and there. Uh, but this, whatever this is, it's coming out of a patch of grass. So if air just silently warned me, I kind of like take in that warning. And I feel like I'm in close proximity enough to pot them and marks to just kind of like squat down and be like, something is coming from this direction. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit louder to the dragonborn who's in front of everything because... What? Right? Yeah. <laughs> huh? Where? <laughs> no. Um, no, she's... Cool. But just so that we're all aware of it, kind of telling them, like, hey, maybe don't move off the wagon okay. for a second. And so, you know, because you're on the ground. Right. So it's between, like, air and I, air in the wagon, or it's up further from air? Uh, it's past air. Past air. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. 
So uh, for those of us that are newer to the game, I also want to mechanically let you know uh, or remind you perhaps that uh, in 5e you can ready an action. Mm -hmm. So what that means is uh, you, you basically say a, a condition, an action and a condition of release. So you say, uh, I'm going to ready a melee attack with my uh, sword if an enemy comes within swinging distance of me, or I'm going to hold a spell uh, if I see a flying creature come out of that cave, right? That kind of a thing. So I got one that I've been wanting to use. Oh my God. I I'm, going to, I'm going to ready my one spell that I have. Well, I have two spells. But one spell that I have, which is speak with the animals. Um, and if an animal comes out, not in a bursting, threatening manner, and peeks out, I would like to speak with that animal okay, and see what, what it's doing. There is one more thing mechanically I should tell you, which is that if you ready a spell, mm -hmm. you burn that spell slot no matter what. I, okay. believe, I believe that's the rule. I'll have to look at oh, double okay. check it. I think that's uh, yeah, but I think I'm pretty sure if you that. ready a spell, there's no getting it back if you, if you decide not to cast <clears> it. You just lose it. Um, okay. the so that's the trade-off of like at, the readied action. Will, but the advantage of the readied action is it happens immediately. You don't right. have to wait for initiative order. Um, you can do that in combat also, by the way. So if, you're ever, if you ever have a turn in combat where you're like, oh, I'm too far away to this, from this creature yeah. to do an attack, but I have an action and I don't want to waste my action, yeah. mm -hmm. you can hold your action conditionally, and then any time in that next combat round, if the condition executes you can still get your action that can, okay. so you don't waste it. Or at the end of the round, you can do that action optionally if you want to, whether the condition happened or not. So you never have to necessarily waste your action uh, in a combat. So then Pando's gonna ready, because there's a, a 30 foot range, she's gonna just ready the Thorn Whip in case it is something that's gonna just sure. <clears throat> blast out and mm -hmm. try to do some damage to our team. I, would, I think, well here, let me ask you first. Um, armor of Agathos. Mm -hmm. Great, I like great spell. It's a great spell. Ooh, but is, is it one? is it loud? I'm wondering. I kind of just want to cast it. I don't think. Power, I don't it, think Armor of Agathis is loud. I mean, no. it does have like a verbal component, but I feel like I could just whisper that or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, well. I guess here's what I would say. I think that to me is flavor. Uh, so, a verbal component. Um, if <laughs> if you were like trying to cast a spell in front of someone and right. get away with it. Uh, we would do like a stealth check or something like that to be like, can you whisper this in a way or can you distract people? But if, if you're like in the woods and hoping that something 20 feet away won't hear you, I don't have any concerns about that. Unless flavor wise, you want to be like, for me to use my magic, it's a big dramatic thing. And I shout, no. <laughs> you know, armor from beyond the grave or whatever. Right? Uh, so no, a hundred percent. No worries about that. Okay. Because I, what is it? Uh, good, I feel <laughs> like the worst part about D&D &D is asking the first... I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, um, no, I'm no, just no. so visual. Uh, well, no, for well, some people, that's the best part. Yeah. Of it. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah, no, no. Well, here, well, you know what? I'll read, the, I'll read the, okay. the, the, the canned description. A protective magical force surrounds you, manifesting as a spectral frost that covers you and your gear. You gain five temporary... Uh, no, just, you gain five temporary hit points nice. uh, for the duration. If a creature hits you with a melee attack while you... Have these hit points, the creature takes five cold damage, and then at higher levels, which I'll be casting as a higher as a level two, it's uh, increased by five for every level, so it's a total of ten. Like a shiny bubble. It's Are yeah. they, I see like a, I see it as like literally like if you were to have you know, you take like a glass and you put it in the freezer and yeah. you have that frosted look. It's yeah. like nice, you know, sparkling cool. and yeah, magical. I dig that a lot. And the, what's great about this is it not only protects you but it also hurts yeah. when something hits you. So it's like a double, double whammy. And I would say that Tanda sees this happening and just kind of goes, ooh. <laughs> ooh, sparkly. Pretty, okay, pretty. I am going to um, add enhanced defense onto my shield. Okay. It gives me, um, it is one of my class features, it gives me a plus one to my armor class. Do nice. we still have your monculus? Did we lose that friend? No. Uh, I'm riding still, him at yes. the current That's name. right. It's yep. in a chair. Okay. He's a homo right. in a chair. It's not a homunculus anymore though, right? It's a... It, it, well, it, it is um, an 
classified as a steel, steel defender. defender. Steel defender is what it is. And okay. We call him the Exocomp. Mm-hmm. Exocomp. I would love to see if his series out of the loop. Exactly, as a temporary hit points, but it doesn't. Yeah, unfortunately. So, um, so I have a question. So this yeah. is a, so this spell <laughs> that is the, uh, the um, it says it doesn't take a spell slot because it's from gain through other class features, racial traits, feats, or items. It probably has a different limitation of some sort. Hmm. Like I'm intrigued by that. Once a day or something. It's or just a yeah. It's just an at will. It's not oh, actually like oh, a. Then. It's an at will. Yeah. Speak with animals. It's huh. Yeah. Sounds like a really fun skill. Because of Spirit Seeker. <clears throat> spirit Seeker. You can cast Beast Sense and speak yep. with animals as rituals. Oh, as rituals. Yes. So a ritual casting takes 10 minutes. Oh, so I have to have 10 minutes. I couldn't this just is cast the it and talk to somebody. Correct. I'd have to be sitting around with the animal for 10 minutes to be able to well, talk to it. Or you can you can do the ritual and then go find an animal to talk okay. to or whatever. But yeah, so the yeah, idea... That's why you've been hanging special. out with the ox this whole time. Right. <laughs> yes. been trying How's really it going? Hard. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. Yeah, so I... It's not good. That's not good here. I picture this as very much uh, like some of these... Some of these little morning rituals and things you've described Freya doing, like this is a similar thing. Like you're, there's some totem interaction, yes. there's some communication with the spirits, well, and then it was you also enter a said state where to, you can like, do Like I was reading about it, cause, and it was also said too that I can use it on the road for things like we see an animal and I can cast this and then get information from that animal. But, you know, just basic information about like what's coming up down the road, have yeah. you seen anything unusual, mm-hmm. you know, things like that is what yeah. I was... What it was saying. And I think there are situations where that would be the case. I don't think reactively, reactively, like there's something approaching. But you know, if you're camping and you do this ritual and then talk to a squirrel or okay. mm-hmm. you know, hey, hey. pelicans flying mm-hmm. by yeah, or whatever. Squirrel. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Then uh, then I'll I'll just um, I'll queue up a melee attack with my sword. All right. Very good. So the party uh, leaps into readiness, and a moment later you see stumbling out of the grasses a lone tabaxi, uh, very uh, sort of dark, sort of a dark auburn uh, fur coloring, um, looking uh, splotched with mud, uh, looking haggard and uh, exhausted, uh, stumbles in to the trail and makes eye contact immediately with Marx uh, and says, Thank Azul, it's you, Marx. You must get word to the Western cell. The blades hit us last night and they're on, our, on their way. Marx looks worriedly at all of you and tries to interrupt what this tabaxi is saying. Uh, but before either of them can say anything further, the tabaxi falls forward on his face in the path and is unconscious. I pick him up. Oh, oh. hang on. Oh. <laughs> what, what you see when he falls down is that his back is bleeding badly mm-hmm. with big gouges uh, through it. And there is a crossbow bolt protruding from mm-hmm. his shoulder blade. Uh, now you may tell me what you'd like to do. <laughs> Um, I, uh, um, Potom hops down from, from the exocomp and goes over and immediately starts doing, um, first aid to okay. you remove the bolt, pull that out. Um, make a medicine check. Oh, come on. Ooh. That's a three. Yeah, that's not good. Not great. Um, so, uh, you run up and as you are <clears throat> attempting to stem the bleeding, uh, it's clear that this tabaxi has already gone into shock and uh, is starting to um, seize up a little bit. Uh, It's probably shock from loss of blood and from exposure. Uh, I'm going to just, because this is who Potom is, he's going to just use heal wounds at this point. Uh, Go ahead and roll for it. Eight. Okay, that's great. 
so you, uh, seeing that your ministrations are not having the effect that you need, you uh, kind of reach into your magical abilities and pull out the dermal regenerator. <laughs> right, get your tools uh, in there. Uh, and very quickly, all of you see, uh, especially the longest, deepest slash wound in this tabaxi's back, uh, close up, the bleeding slows. Uh, the crossbow bolt is still jammed in there uh, underneath his shoulder blade, uh, but you see their breathing uh, become <clears throat> relaxed and regular. Uh, the seizure stops, uh, and now this tabaxi is unconscious, but sleeping peacefully. Uh, and at this point, Marx sort of uncomfortably clears his throat and says, <clears throat> uh, this is a friend of mine, but I think he's clearly delirious. I must have, he must have been attacked by bandits. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we just well, kind of uh, sit and look at everyone. My, uh, <laughs> Can uh, we, like, uh, I'm sure I'll have to roll something, persuasion, something, um, but, like, Panda turns to Marx and is like, so, uh, we've saved each other's lives over the course of the last couple of days, um, it seems like there's more going on here than you're leading up to, can we please know the truth, if we're gonna help protect you from whatever just happened to your tabaxi friend? And we may be more sympathetic to your cause if you're initially uh, worried about. Okay. And also, your explanation sounds a lot, smells a lot like auric dung. <laughs> oh, wait, there it is. Oh, yeah. That's, <laughs> uh, that's just an environmental factor. Sorry. Uh, all right, Pando, make a persuasion check with advantage because you are getting help. The fact that you have uh, not fully but indirectly revealed mm -hmm. that you may have. Yeah. Other loyalties is a significant help. Okay. So you said advantage. What yep. Fran does. <laughs> Maybe we should be more. Eighteen. <laughs> well, <laughs> fast and loose with your rebel ties. It's fine. Uh, Eighteen. Okay. Uh, Marx. What if Marx is double agent? <laughs> Marx pulls out a dagger and stabs you. <laughs> uh, Marx sighs deeply. Uh, looks very nervous. The tail is twitching, twitching, twitching. Uh, but he says, um, after a deep breath, his name is Haid Gato. He's a fisherman from a small community north of Salt March Landing. But he is also a member of a small group, a cell of, well, they're rebels fighting against the Empire. They call themselves the Yokogawai. Oh. The reason he knows me is that years ago, my granddaughter joined up and the two of them are close. While I have never been willing to fully put my neck on the line and join their cause, not to mention I'm a little old for all this running around in the swamp. I've been doing my best to keep her safe. So occasionally I will run supplies, bring messages, just try to keep her out of harm's way as best I can. But if their hideout got attacked, I'm really worried about Festina. That's my granddaughter. We need to get him woken up and figure out what's going on. And if I need to go dig up my old sword, I, I just don't know what to do. Do you know if they were um, harboring anybody in their safe house at this point? Or have any other recent information about what was going, what their current mission was? I really don't. I try to stay out of it. I, when this all started, I figured it was just a phase that she wanted to run around in the swamp with some of her friends and play at being a hero. They would occasionally steal things from Imperial 
store holds or sneak into a, a, a camp. Never really got violent. Really just picking at the side of the dragon. But I've never seen this response. I mean, he almost died. If the blades are here and slashing their way through, I didn't know they had even been uncovered. So I have no idea. I don't, I intentionally try not to know what's going on, but I've just tried to keep her out of trouble. That's, um... Yeah, Air reassures Marks and says, it would be the first time that we've crossed swords with blades. <laughs> okay. You're with right, you're, you're with the, you're with the good group. Right? <laughs> okay. right. And a similar. <laughs> He, uh, his eyebrows go up a little bit at that. Like, I do think he's surprised, uh, not only that that's the case, but that it, that people would admit it. Uh, <laughs> Pano kind of goes, you know, just much dirt <laughs> on so. like yeah. marks. Right. Yeah. But Pano kind of, you know, points to like elf, not elf. Mm -hmm. Um, well, it, uh, no one would believe him anyway. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> It uh, puts my mind at ease a bit, but again, we need to... Is it all right if we pull off the trail here and set up camp? It's about time anyway. Yeah. I need to know what Hade knows. Yeah. Uh, Hade Gato. So if you... Um, Is there anything Pando can contribute to healing Hade Gato quicker? I know that we've like healed the, the big... Well, ones. I wonder if you and I work together, mm -hmm. if we can extract that. Okay. Uh, we need bolt. a little. You need a little Freya. Mm -hmm. Need a little Freya. Like a like a. To, then we would have advantage mm -hmm. on a medicine check to remove that bolt. Yeah. Out. I mean, sure. he's stabilized. He's got eight hit points now. Yeah, so. he's not actively dying right now. Right. He's just. I'm just thinking just like wounded bringing with him a crossbow bolt out back. of it. Yeah. Quicker. Uh, certainly, you can can collaborate on that. Uh, so let's fast forward just a little while. About maybe thirty minutes later, you. Mm -hmm pulled the wagon to the side, you've set up a, a quick camp, and you have uh, some space cleared, Marx has got a fire going, uh, and Hade is uh, laid out in a clean uh, patch of ground uh, on his chest, uh, face down. And if you're gonna attempt to remove this bolt, uh, you can make a, one of you can make a medicine check at advantage. Or you can each independently roll a what? medicine check if you want. What is your uh, bonus for your medicine check? Plus four. Oh yeah, no, you do, you do it. Do it for advantage. <laughs> yeah. Twelve. Okay. Uh, so good news, bad news. Uh, the good news is you do not do any additional harm and you do uh, remove the bolt. Bad news is Hade wakes up screaming uh, because the removal of this bolt is very painful to him. Uh, you're able to, uh, with Freya's help, hold him down so that Cover the, his mouth. the squirming okay, shirt... covers his mouth. Shh, I'm sorry, kitty. Shh. 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 Not happy about this. Um, but you do quickly get it patched up. Uh, and certainly now Hade is awake. Uh, you should let me die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he's in much better shape than he was. Uh, he's clearly exhausted. He's in a lot of pain, uh, but he is not dying. And uh, as Hade awakens and rolls over, he looks terrified at each of you, uh, very nervous, but then sees Mark's, uh, his face kind of looking over everybody's shoulder, concerned. Uh, and he immediately looks at Mark's and says, can they be trusted? And Marks kind of laughs a little bit and he goes, well, a little late for that runt. <laughs> uh, under questioning, uh, Hade tells you what has happened. Uh, their hideout uh, in the swamp was attacked at dusk yesterday by a troop of blades. He estimates more than 20, Ooh, including, wow. including mages. Uh, the, the group 
of Yokogawa, the cell scattered as the attack took place, but they were totally surprised. And more than half of the 30 person cell was wiped out in the surprise attack. He watched many of his friends and comrades uh, fall uh, as they were having their evening meal. Everybody else ran into the swamp. Uh, he doesn't know who else escaped, but he didn't see Festina fall in the initial attack. Uh, so he's hopeful, at least, that she might have escaped into the swamp. Uh, he is not only distraught from seeing so many of his friends killed, but uh, without an insight check, I think it's very obvious. Uh, this is a person who didn't think it would ever get this serious. So they're uh, over their head, then. yeah, big time. Yeah. So this, this guy's a fisherman uh, who was upset by the level of imperial taxation, who was upset by um, the, the difficulties of life under imperial rule, uh, never saw the benefits that the empire preached would be coming when they became a vassal state. Uh, and so when a fairly charismatic uh, person started whispering around the villages that there was a way to fight back, uh, he started to show up to clandestine meetings uh, and over time developed a very close kinship with this growing group of people who would sneak out to the swamp and talk about how life could be better without the empire and how uh, a, a group of passionate people, pure of purpose, could change the world. And uh, they started fighting back in the way that they thought possible. They would uh, stealth their way into uh, warehouses and abscond with food and supplies and distribute those Robin Hood style into the community. They even on some of their most daring uh, raids took money or weapons or equipment from uh, Imperial wagon trains that were moving across uh, the landscape, uh, redirected shipments that uh, were being passed through tabaxi courier networks. Um, and Honestly, the whole time they thought they were getting away with it until last night, by surprise, half of them were murdered in a surprise attack. So this guy is in shock emotionally and a little less physically now, but emotionally kind of can't believe that this happened. So Blades, Blades live on this, in this space. I thought for some reason they just like came and went or like checked in from time to time. Well, so, uh, offices or something. Yeah, field offices. So, right. so here's the deal. The blades are on the islands. The blades are very much akin to a police force, right? So in Chukip and in other, uh, parts of the empire proper, the blades are like cops, but on the mainland, uh, the blades are essentially the empire's control apparatus. They are the they are the way that the empire retains oversight of its vassal state. So every one of these vassal states has uh, a government of its own. This is very much a Roman Empire kind of a of a structure. Okay. They're allowed to retain their own government ostensibly from the empire's perspective, just as a courtesy, mm -hmm. right? It's, isn't that cute that you, you know, continue to pretend like right. you're governing yourselves mm -hmm. and we don't really care what you do on the local level. Like right. that's all fine as long as you operate mm -hmm. within the strictures of the empire. But there is a, an, an imperial government apparatus overseeing every one of these vassal states as well. And a su substantial blade presence, um, that provides the, the force to make sure that that works. So picture Roman centurions marching mm -hmm. through the streets. Um, they are n different than cops out here. They're here to make sure you don't 
step over the line and they're here to make sure that the vassal states remember that they're vassal states. Um, so this is a different look at blades than any of you has ever experienced mm -hmm. because you've not explored the mainland. You've not seen this side of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I would probably guess that for Pando, this question is both very real in character as it is uh, out of character. Like she didn't know blades would do, right. would be part of something like this, like a mid a dusk raid on a swamp hideout to slay rebels, not a thing. However, it does have eerie echoes to you of the night you all met. Oh yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. You know, I was thinking about that. That's what I was wondering. <clears throat> if it wasn't uh, just, was it just rebels that were there? Or were there other people that were being smuggled? Um, you know, or assisted at the time? Yeah, so Hade, Hade will uh, tell you very directly, they're, they don't, they've never done any people smuggling. They don't know mm. what, they, when you bring that up, he is like, what, what? are you talking about? <laughs> Okay. what we have done uh actually make a let me ask this are you trying are you trying to give any hint or are you protecting the information that you're familiar with the name yoko gawai and that you have some idea that these are connected well i think we know that freya doesn't protect information very well okay <laughs> <laughs> okay I kind of love that about her. All right. Awesome. I mean, she's just very direct. Okay. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> Why do you, so, so I'll say you're not, uh, I'm not, you're I'm not just like throwing around the term, mm -hmm. but yeah. I think when you ask about this stuff, um, it's enough to get a reaction out of him. Roll an insight check. Anybody who would like to can roll an insight check. <laughs> oh, Air would definitely like that. Can't read that. Oh, poor showing for my first of the three. <laughs> Okay, well, that's, that's in character for Freya. Right. I got a 22. Okay, that's, that's a lot. Um, so I, I would say that it is immediately obvious to... Air, what did you get? 21. Oh, okay. So it's immediately obvious to the two of you. Not to You miss it. Uh, and, yeah, and I got a 14. Yeah, so I think uh, you, you notice the confusion, perhaps, sure. on his face. But it's immediately obvious to the two of you as Freya starts to ask about things with this cell of the Yokogawa that remind her mm -hmm. of what you've experienced. This guy has no clue, and you know immediately he doesn't even know that the Yokogawa exists outside of his cell. From his from Hade's perspective, the Yokogawa yes. was a local thing with people in in a set of fishing villages where he lives. It was their idea. It sprung up organically. And he had, the only thing he's aware of is that there's another cell somewhere to the west that Marx has been running information back and forth for. And that's why he pushed himself through the night or through the day to try to get to this trail in the hopes that he could find someone trustworthy to get a message to the western cell because he is, though he doesn't know, he is terrified that they will be hit next and that they'll be wiped out without warning. Uh, he doesn't know whether or not they've been revealed. He doesn't even know how I this group this was revealed. I love that this little cell is worried about the big cell. <laughs> well, because he doesn't know. He, and he doesn't know. Right. He, no, I love that. Yeah. I think it's, it's great. Okay. So at this point, uh, Mark's jumps back into the conversation. He's clearly worried about his granddaughter, but Hade is pressing him to turn the wagon around at once and head back west towards Featherwand to share this message, to pass this message along. He does not want to do that. He wants to head out into the swamp now and find his granddaughter. Mm -hmm. um, but Hade is terrified that the Western Cell will face a similar fate if they don't get some kind of advance warning. At this point, Marx turns to you all and says, look, this isn't your problem. And you've been good to me. I realize I have not completed the contract, but I trust you. You take the wagon. 
finish the journey to Salt March Landing. You're almost there. It'll take you a few hours in the morning. Just leave the wagon with Restic. He can help you get things loaded onto a ship. Leave half my pay with him. I'll get it when I come back. I only finished half the job. It's fair. I'll do what I need to do here. You've healed up Hade well enough. He can probably run his way all the way to Feather Wan and carry this message that he needs to, and I can go find my granddaughter. You don't need to get caught up in this any more than you already are. And Feather Wan's in the opposite direction, where we need to go, right? Yeah. Yeah. So That's where we just came from. So yeah. Feather Wan is at your back. It's west. Yeah. You're headed due east towards the coast. Yeah, uh, and that's you're now close, closer to Salt March Landing than you are to Feather Wand. Um, close to just finishing this leg of your journey. Uh, no, I. I say we switch places and we go after. Oh, sorry, not to not to Mars. <laughs> yeah, as a side. Let us confer. Yeah, yeah. Let's confer. sure. Do you mind if we confer for a moment? Yeah, of course. So I think I think uh, Marx and uh, Hade. Just kind of mm-hmm. sit and get into deeper conversation. Marx is pushing him for more details, where Festina was, sure. what he saw, all of that, uh, while you all talk for a little bit. Uh, we, I'm going to let you talk for a little bit while I, still on on recording, but while I think you all chat around the fire. Well, we can't let him, he's, I mean, it'll be, a, no. it's a death, it's a, Right, yeah. we're in, we're in. Yeah, we're, <laughs> yeah, we should go and get his granddaughter. Or, I, it, yeah. He's going to be invaluable with being able to know exactly where she's located and everything, though. Like, I don't think that we should separate from him. If you, yeah, if you think. I think, I, uh, I don't know if he really knows that much, but I suppose he knows something. You know, he knows the area him. really well. I mean, he, yeah. this is what he and does. And are we okay with Hade going toward Father One to warn? Think, what are we with the, what do do the part, though? I know, that's a good question. Do we... Does can Hade we, take can we just cover it with something, with some little cover spell, so that people no. don't notice it as much? Or I would imagine that, that is something that I oh, would have to work actually. on for a long time. Um, oh yeah, somebody has to take care of the animals, I guess. Is he... Can Hade take the cart? He can't, or is that going to just delay him no, too much? No, that would probably delay him. He has to run. It's just a complete. Aside, aside, um, aside, aside. You're right. No, out of game. I would be sort of fun to if we end up splitting the party. We run smaller, smaller, shorter sessions where we have just a couple of us together. So if we end up breaking up into teams, I don't know. One to one to assist, one to go one way, one to go the other. I've just that is, I mean, something for us all to think about mm-hmm. in the current moment. Um, I won't die on that hill, but I'm I'm generally against splitting the party from like a logistics perspective. Um, for like long term, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I think that. Uh, I think if we can like hide the, I mean we got real animals, so that's my only like. I say we can, I say we can get enough detail. I mean I don't. He doesn't remember. He doesn't know. He's he's made it a point of not knowing as much right. as possible. So I think like we could just go. Oh, he guess what he knows. Yeah, but he knows the area. That's the thing. He knows the area really really well, and we don't know the area at all. You know, like <laughs> I do yeah. wonder though if he'll be more of a liability or more in danger if he comes with us. Yeah, is he just going to be a body that's going to get shot with a crossbow and, bolt in his back? And honestly, just try to stop him. I mean, is he? You know, well, we need someone. Are you talking about Marks or are you talking about Hade? Marks. Marks. Because it sounds like Hade is going to just head off. I'm thinking Feather that Ron he by goes himself. to Feather yeah. Wand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he he's, seems he's, like he's capable now that he's mm-hmm. that he's up. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about that. Mm-hmm. Our big thing. Um, I feel like our big well, thing is what do we do with the cart? That's okay. our biggest thing right now. And Marks. So many Like, choices. Panda keeps thinking of Lily and how Lily was there, like, without any skill set except Marks, to, like, claw. But Marks has a skill set, too. But in combat? I mean, he killed he, with the crossbow. He killed one of our guys and saved us. Well, it's just the fact that he's old and right. he doesn't want to be running around the, right. the marsh, which is why he's... Exactly. Not, he's just... 
I mean, uh, I guess we run it by him, but we can't say what he's going to do or not do. You know, no. he's already like, he's already wanting to go. So we can just say, hey. Then let's ask him what it. his idea is, because I don't want to just abandon everything that we just did, right? Mm-hmm. On the cart mm-hmm. and the ox and all of that. So Well, he was pretty clear about his idea. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, we're, well, we're proposing we take his place. We go for right. his granddaughter. Uh, so I think in response to that, uh, Mark's, this is a, this is a gruff old cat, right? Uh, but he, he gets a little emotional in response to that. Like he's surprised, uh, by your offer. Uh, we all have death wishes, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he says, um, I, I don't know what to say to that. The idea that you would put your lives at risk to help an old man, uh, it's very nice of you, but that's ridiculous. I just need to go find her, pull her out of this swamp and get her home. Uh, But it also makes sense to us that being younger and uh, a bit more spry, and your livelihood is on the line as this wagon and these ox are uh, your main lines uh, that you go and take care of this while we go and take care of that and we'll meet you in uh, not ch- saltwater marsh. Our skill sets might be better suited for these tasks. <laughs> and there's more of us. Can I, can I roll a uh, persuasion? Yeah. Uh, yes. You can roll a persuasion check. This will be to see if you can convince Marks, yeah. and not and I to will go. assist you clearly as I'm. Yeah, you're trying to trying to convince Marks not to go with you. Um, I just take care of the cart. Yeah, take care of her. I mean, take unless, care of her poop. Unless he has a better idea about what to do with the cart, I don't think he. I think he equally doesn't want it. He thinks like something has to do with the cart. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think if you get into this level of debate with him, what he would suggest is, like, or can he just like whisper to the orcs and then they'll just go somewhere. Like I don't like I guess yeah. I don't know. So like he, I think he he's he's got ideas about how things could be secured out here, like oh, okay. at the camp. Uh, he probably doesn't love the idea of you know tying up his oxen and and them. exposing them for maybe a day or more to predators or things like that. But could he tie up and hide the wagon and kind of secure these guys off the trailways? Sure, it's not like he hasn't had to do this once or twice in his in his life. He's less worried about that. I think Marx's big thing, his big motivations are two things. One, he doesn't understand why you, though you're very nice people and he's liked working with you, why you, after 48 hours of knowing him, would want to put your lives at risk to go tromping off into the swamp with him. Because it's what we do. <laughs> and he doesn't know you're the heroes of the story. Uh, number clearly. two, right. clearly. He, the, the biggest barrier is... He uh, does not want to not be involved in saving his granddaughter. I All mean, he personally wants to do right now is run out into the swamp an, and I mean, go find her. I mean, yeah. I mean, Air doesn't is not opposed to him coming. No. I guess I just wanted to make sure that the so I want to. Well, here's what I want to understand: what you're trying to convince him, because it's a different DC depending on what you're trying to convince you're right. um, Marks of here. There's there's different bars you're trying to get over. Sure. So Potom's main concern is. That we've come all this way with our, our load, and oh, yeah. ultimately doesn't want to go and have to do all that whole objective again. Yeah. So yeah, I think we I think we are convincing him to take the card. Okay. Take the, take the card and, and secure trust it. Us. All right. Then make a persuasion check mm-hmm. at advantage with Potom's helm. Oh. Okay. Well, okay. Thank God it's advantage. <laughs> Are you? F- oh, 24. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch that die and go, or like settle and yeah. then roll over? It was like a four and one. I was like, oh, that was a that was a big old roll, uh, and it was good because it was a very high DC. Uh, this is a this is a man who, um, as you talk to him, you come to recognize that's his only remaining family, his granddaughter, uh, and he desperately wants to be out there helping. But I think over the course of some discussion, 
your pragmatism about what you need and want helps him to be convinced that you're not just crazy people who are helping him because you're crazy, uh, but that there's something, it makes sense to his practical mind. And that opens the door for you to convince him that you will be more effective without him along, which hurts his pride a little bit, but it's not like he's some bold warrior who's looking to get back yeah. into right. a scuffle. He's just an old man who was going to do whatever it took. Yeah. Uh, and so, part of the calculation is, I think he needs to recognize that we would just be better at saving his daughter. I, I think, well, there, there was the line, he was going to do whatever it took. And you go, we are what it takes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, and, but, and part of the calculation, maybe this helps him understand why we're doing it, is part of the calculation is, well, we need the cart delivered. So yeah. So that's, this is kind of the exchange. Make sure that our cart is delivered and we'll bring you your, your uh, granddaughter. So I think eventually, again, with a very, with now a patented Mark's deep sigh, uh, he looks at all of you and says, I don't know how it is that Azul put you in my path, but I am deeply grateful that she did. I will finish the job, take your load to Salt March Landing, and await you there at the beached Kraken. And we'll bring, what's, what's, her, what's her granddaughter's name? Festina. Festina. She... We will find Festina and bring her to you. The only thing I can tell you is uh, when we would meet in the marsh, uh, we had a safe place separate from the hideout. The rest of the cell didn't know about it. I demanded that she keep it a secret in case uh, anything could be connected back to us. There is a larger than normal scrub pine. If you head almost due south from here, a few hours time, you'll see it obviously standing out from everything else. Just past that, you'll find a scattering of large rocks, strange in this landscape, but they stand out from the swamp. We would typically meet there. It's the best lead I can give you. From that spot, the hideout, well, Hade, tell them. And Hade describes to you that the, uh, from the spot, he, know, he knows of that spot, but didn't know that uh, Festina and Marx would meet there. He says from that spot that the hideout uh, is a short walk west. Um, so their best guess is that Festina had she escaped the hideout would be somewhere between those two points. So your journey from here, should you search for her, is uh, due Probably. south, yeah. looking for that taller than normal scrub pine, and then potentially heading back west towards the hideout <clears throat> to see what you can find. Is there, oh, is there anything else that we can tell her? Is that what you're gonna ask too? I was gonna say, are there so, any like distinctive oh, um, right. visual like characteristics that we can like confirm or have an idea that it might be her, mm -hmm. or that or something we can tell her mm -hmm. that would that would help her to trust us and know that we come from you? Uh, well, you can't miss her. She's a pure void. <laughs> um, With orange eyes. <laughs> My void has orange eyes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all black, t uh, tip to tip. Um, and uh, he says, if you know my name, she'll, she'll trust you. I'm the only one she's got left. Okay. Well, so, then what is your full name? Because we know you by Marx. Oh, good question. What is Marx's full name? Hmm. Mark's yeah, as, as, as cats go, there's meow, usually meow. 27 d distinct names. Mark's, Mark's meow meow. Mark's <laughs> McNugget <laughs> Pants. <laughs> Mark's <laughs> McNugget <laughs> Pants, Floofy Pantaloons. <laughs> 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 Mark's Floofy Pantaloons. Uh, no, I think it's just Mark's. Okay. I, I think that is... Uh, that's been his going name for that's, his entire that's life. That's yeah. just what people call him. He's Mark's, just, just Mark's. Mark's. Mark, that's his full name. Mark's Mark. just Marks. Yeah, Mark's kind of um, just Marks. <laughs> Mark's just Marks the kitty. So at this point, um, 
having made these decisions, uh, there's one decision left for you to make. Uh, Hade is Hade and Marks are both going to rest the remainder of the night, mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, well, you'll have a decision to make of your own. But oh, at dawn, they will get up and head their separate ways. Marks gives Hade instructions about how to pass along a message to the other cell because Hade has never been uh, that way. Only Marks knows uh, where the drop is for messages, um, or rather, where they can be posted. Uh, actually, I'll say. Those with passive perception higher than 12, which is most of you, I think, are I mean. not. No. <laughs> Pando, you do, right? Um, passive 16. perception. Yeah, okay, so you definitely go to 13. 13. So the two of you, I think, overhear uh, their conversation um, enough to pick up this extra little tidbit, which is that uh, the place where messages get handed off to the other cell in Featherwand is by posting on a specific totem. Uh, so a, a, a note in code is to be tacked to uh, one of the totems, uh, and he walks Hade through how to do that. I tried to climb one of those. <laughs> Unsuccessful. Un un never came no, didn't, didn't make it very far. No. So now the decision that is before you all as a party is, do you set out immediately? Uh, in the dark, uh, it is not full dark yet, but it is dusk. Uh, so it has been roughly 24 hours since the attack. Do you set out immediately uh, to find Festina, or do you also complete a long rest and head out in the morning? Well, just remembering that uh, climb on the totem, <laughs> realize why I only have 19 hit points out of my 23. Um, and I'm down a, cell, a spell slot, so I, I think that we should set out in the morning. I was going to say, yeah, because your medicine... Even though time is of the right. essence. I was going to say time but, is of the essence, but... But it, but it would it, be good. His medicine check has saved me a lot of times from death. Yeah. Multiple, multiple times. I'm just thinking, like, in character more so. Yeah. Like, it's like, we just spend this whole time convincing uh, marks, marks that we're like, don't worry, we'll take care of it. Anyway, I'm gonna go to sleep now. Uh, yeah, let's take a quick rest. <laughs> All right, let's. I'll, I'll, I'll just. I'm just saying. Let's go. I'll be out. I can. I can be outvoted. <laughs> it's um. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're playing. We may need that medicine check for. Um, I think sometimes it's just D and D. I have two, right? oh, I have two spell two slots left. left. Okay. So. Okay. All right. Yeah, we can do it. That was my initial thought that we should get going, and then. All right, so you're no setting out south. Was for you. We got multiple ways to heal, right? Yeah, we do. I was just checking too. I have all my all my um, spells still. It's yeah, we locked. have two pseudo healers. We're fine. All right, that's two more than love parties. Till I die. Correct. Can you take a nap on your steel defender as we walk? Uh, I don't. I don't think I can long rest while we're walking. Definitely not long <laughs> rest. I would give you a short rest. But that doesn't uh, help. That, I mean, roll. Uh, can't, you, can't you roll hit die? Yeah, you can roll hit I dice. Hit you know, but yeah, but that doesn't replace the spell slot. Ah, it's the main spell slot. Doesn't want to spell slot. <laughs> you still have two. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> I have two. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? All right, so famous uh, last so, words. Sometimes you gotta press forward. You know, <laughs> it's just good. We can do it. I do think we that Marx is gonna get super antsy if we don't. He's yeah, gonna no. feel like we don't have a well, I, it is smart. sense of we, urgency. Let's go. Let me make a stew, and then I'm gonna take a nice rest, and then we'll make coffee. I mean, that in the sounds morning, great. And then, and then we'll I'm gonna work on this experiment a little bit, and then maybe we'll get some saving projects. I got projects. Um, all right, so you set off. Um, this is uh, this is a little different, right? Because you are now off the trail. You are essentially marching into swamp. Uh, and I think uh, Potom being up on your steel defender is uh, what is allowing you to go at a regular pace mm -hmm. at this point. Um, at times, mm -hmm. this is difficult terrain. You all have to um, go around deeper areas of water or sometimes wade across uh, sort of more significant marshy areas, push your way through uh, obstacles. Um, 
and it is getting progressively darker and darker. In order to make sure that you can maintain your sense of direction, uh, I would like someone to make a survival check. Uh, <coughs> it's going to be one of you taking the lead on that. Uh, I have a plus four. Yeah, so I was, was going to say the, wiz the wisdom yeah. checks are definitely yours. Um, I, I have a plus Six two for survival. Okay. 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 So Pando, I think um, as you as you plunge in here, again, this is very different from anything you've experienced in your life. But as we talked about before, your sense of the wild is starting to open up a little bit. And there are times when, though this is unfamiliar landscape to you, there are certain things that feel naturally right. You're picking up um, subtleties like a, a game trail here or there or a sense of where wildlife might take this path rather than this path. And uh, though it's not perfect, and there are plenty of times where you all uh, stumble into deeper muddy water than you expected to or whatever, you don't uh, end up being harmed through any hazards. And you have a fairly high level of confidence that you've maintained uh, your direction uh, fairly well over time. Uh, I would like someone else to make a perception check, or two people can, uh, if you want to, uh, as you're looking for this landmark. Did you say two people? I have a plus six. So someone not else. Pando. Someone else has to do this. I have this. a plus three for perception. You can. I mean, I have <clears throat> not very perceptive. Okay, I'll, I'll take this one then. Eric likes to think she's more perceptive than she is. That tracks, Eleven. That's not right. <laughs> Here, I can, here, I'll, I'll, I'll throw it in there too. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> hey, she's, you're like, she's hitting really them this time. Yeah. She's on the warpath. Yeah, no, she's like, <laughs> apparently. She's ready to, yeah. Yeah, she's ready to do something. She's like flinging around her packed blade, it disappears Don't, and reappears. Well, okay. <laughs> just juggling as you want. Jesus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she's like, she's and you have, that. do you both have dark vision? Who has dark yes, vision? Heck yeah. I, I, do. I do too, actually. Pando has dark oh. vision. Oh, everybody's got dark yeah. vision. Mm -hmm. Well, that, yeah. that's great. Um, so, uh, it is, the sun has set, uh, by the time you spot this tree, uh, it is dim light at this point, but you, uh, you air spot this first out in the distance. Um, it's not like a huge, crazy landmark tree, but relative to everything else out here, uh, this is like the size of a normal ass tree. Uh, but for one of these scrub pines, it's strange uh, at this point to see one so large. Um, and as you approach it, you immediately uh, see that in the, in the area, at least right around here, there's no one and it's relatively undisturbed. Uh, but uh, then you recall that Mark's told you their meeting spot was actually a little further past uh, that tree. And now you're looking for this uh, kind of gathering of unusual rocks. Uh, so walking a little further, you uh, maybe 15 more minutes of hiking through the swamp, uh, you see ahead of you an area, uh, again, a patch of darkness here, but where there doesn't seem to be a lot of these grasses and things. And uh, so you're picturing in your mind that likely there are many low rocks uh, here. It could be what um, Marx was referring to. I need to make a quick little world check and yeah. see what Oops. is actually happening Oops. in the world. I, uh, that was an accidental result. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you anything about the history of this area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was with my plus two advantage too. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you, how are you approaching this uh, area? Are you coming up quietly? Or are you continuing to move at a normal pace? What's your, what's your approach to showing up? I think quickly, but maybe you know, the best the doesn't have self It would have no, no, no. presented right no, here. No, but I do in the... Weapon drawn. We can talk about it. Okay. Okay. I do. 
So okay. blades out, moving fast. <laughs> yeah, air is ready to waste some fools. Okay. With her new spells. All right. Well, See, <laughs> Pando feels very confident in this sort of an element <clears throat> as opposed to a lot of others. All right, you you charge into this clearing, and it is a, an interesting sort of unusual space uh, relative to everything else around it. There are uh, probably eight pretty broad, flat, big granite rocks here, uh, similar in size to this table, so like conference table size uh, rocks, relatively flat, um, and I would say almost immediately uh, some of you pick up on, and you could decide individually whether you pick up on this or not, but that these are not natural uh, formations. Uh, the rocks are too similar in size and shape. Uh, they've got lots of stuff growing over them. Uh, a couple of them are broken in interesting ways. They're not laid out in, a, in an organized pattern, but these eight rocks are all the same size and shape. So they're almost more like plinths or something constructed. Mm. They're not obviously shaped uh, by humanoid hands uh, at a glance, but they've been here for a long time. They are uh, unusual for this area. They don't look naturally occurring and they're all the same shape and size. But the other thing you notice is there is no one here. Mm. Any signs of, can I investigate? Yep, like, you can make an investigation check. Fires or, or, you know, like someone had a campfire. Sure. Or I would also like to investigate. Mm -hmm. Disappointing. Eight. Twenty-three. Okay. Do you want to do? Oh, yeah. Sure. Oh, that's fine. Show off. Twenty-three is fine. <laughs> because uh, it's the plus six to the investigation, but uh, this is what he does really well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just out of curiosity, because Pando did sort of teach back where she came from and she was very altruistic and very like interested in learning um could she do like a history check to see if she has some familiarity with like understanding this area or like having read about it or learned about it a little bit sure make go ahead and make a history check maybe not yeah, this is not. <laughs> this is more than Freya. This is not reading. This is not ringing any bells okay. uh, for Pandora for sure. Our party knows nothing of the history of this area. Right. <laughs> um, we may have history advantage in some right. places, but so as you come into this area and see uh, immediately as a glance that there's nobody here, uh, Potom's eyes quickly go to the ground and he starts uh, kind of in a, a circular pattern, uh, looking at the area, kind of back and forth, examining things. Um, and you discover a couple things. So first of all, uh, it is clear to you that no one has been here for days, possibly even a week. Uh, the most recent sign of any uh, presence here, some like moss or growing things that have been scuffed off of the rocks uh, that you wouldn't attribute to animals perhaps, or maybe, maybe instead boots or something like that. Uh, it's been a while. There's no sign of a fire or a camp. Clearly, whoever, if anybody comes here, they don't stay here long. Um, but it's very obvious to you that if Festina escaped, she didn't make it here. Um, while you were describing that, I was thinking of the scene in The Princess Bride of the Prince, who's like, here, there was a scuffle. <laughs> yeah. It describes it perfectly to everyone. <laughs> Definitely. You can see by the boot marks. Yeah. Um, yeah, nobody's been here. And so we got further description when we were back at the cart from um, the Tabaxi and from Marx about a little bit of this area, not just the tree, which was from Marx, but like about where like the Tabaxi came from. Yeah, right? so what you know now is that. Uh, from where you are currently standing, mm -hmm. the hideout is a west, in a westerly direction from here. So the place where the attack happened, mm -hmm. the place where the, the, this group of Yokogawa I would gather in the swamp, uh, is less than an hour's walk west of here. And it is at this point full dark. Do we want to continue toward that direction since no one's here? I think so, right? Hmm. 
Okay, so you set off. Uh, talk to me about. Um, talk to me about how you're proceeding at this point. What's the What's the vibe? Is it continuing to just move fast, swords out, crash through the swamp, or are we taking a different approach? How are you tackling this task at this point? I think I think we're just continuing our pace, or at least briskly. Really. I, Briskly, right? Or no? You don't think I think so? that we're on the right track at the moment. And if we just go crashing in. Oh, yes. Yeah. If we find the blades, then, I mean, they, they know that we're coming. And yeah. from what I remember, Battle Mages doesn't something that I am particularly interested in running <laughs> into. But two, I would imagine that if I, my party was just attacked and I heard a ruckus coming towards us that that would give me great anxiety mm -hmm. uh, and one i think that we use a little bit more care sure. now that we know okay. we're close okay sure okay so we're taking more of a stealth approach it sounds like mm -hmm. so i would like you to do uh we we're, we're going to do two checks someone's going to make a survival check once again to keep you uh moving accurately in the direction you want to go do that. okay 22. Awesome. 22 is excellent. Uh, and then everyone, please make a stealth check. Nineteen. Eighteen. Eighteen. Three. Three. Oh, oh but it's in that one. No, the, yeah, for skill checks, that doesn't matter. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, Okay, so the groups, the group self. Still just throwing her knife around. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, look what I can do. Yeah, on, on I am order. actually She's quiet on. this time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the group stealth check is what's going to carry here. So I, I think uh, it sounds like Air is in a very specific mindset, right? Is driven uh, She's here. Purpose in her life. Air, and, you're breathing too loud. Yeah. But, <laughs> but the rest of the group is helping here. So I think from time to time. Uh, Pando is like grabbing Air's elbow and pulling her to the side before she steps on a branch. I'm just pulling Air from the back once in a while. <laughs> Lift, lifting her up. Lifting her up. Over very loud areas, yeah. This is her off. I can it. Um, so you proceed in the direction of the... Um, of the hideout, and you have a high level of confidence that you're heading due west. Uh, Freya's keeping you dialed in, um, maybe reading the stars uh, at this point. It's a clear night, and I think Freya's navigated that way before uh, up north. Um, Are we passing any animals in this little adventure of ours? Uh, make either a perception or a nature check. Nineteen. Uh, yeah, you are. So there are some night creatures uh, cruising around out here, and you're moving quietly enough that um, they they're not actively avoiding you. There's definitely uh, quite a few reptiles uh, out slithering about right now. Uh, some bats, definitely that you uh, notice. Uh, and you hear it, the strange, call, uh, a brand new call of an owl, uh, the one that you've never heard uh, before on Chukip, uh, or in Chukip. Kind of goes, ooh. Yep. <laughs> uh, and I, I will say it's not, um, it's not like a pleasant owl call. It's not like the uh, great horned owl, like the. <laughs> it's more like. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of it's one of the obnoxious owl calls, but yes. but Pando definitely picks up owl uh, from amazing. this. Um, probably about 30, 35 minutes into your uh, kind of stealthy hike in this direction. <laughs> there you go. Um, you hear up ahead a kind of a scuffling disturbance. You hear small splashes, uh, some rustling, uh, as if multiple creatures are 
moving rapidly through the marsh yes. in your direction. Rapid moving creatures. Are these more taxi coming at us? Hard to know, but uh, that's the that's the advance warning I'm going to give you. You you're moving quietly. Uh, you don't necessarily know whether you've been detected or not, but you do at least hear uh, up ahead of you some some distance. It's hard to tell in the dark. Uh, I mean, but getting louder coming towards us. It is ahead of you. All that's all I can say okay. at this point. Uh, if you want to slow down and really try to listen, we can do perception checks. If you want to move forward, you can do that. What, what would your response be to hearing noises like this up ahead? I think you'd hold up a second. I was going to say, can I do a perception check just to see if I can recognize if it's a beast of some kind coming toward us? Sure. So, so uh, the party kind of silently pauses when somebody's yeah. fist goes up in a <laughs> symbol. Uh, and uh, Panda, go ahead and make a perception check. See if you can get a sense of what you're hearing. It's going to be a nine, Matt. It's going to be a nine. Squawking owl. <laughs> yeah, just just at, the, just at the time when you when you quietly just try to listen, <laughs> the owl is uh, piping up. Um, I mean, it's not that bad, but I think uh, because of everything else uh, that's going on around you right now, you're not picking up a lot of extra information here. You've got direction. Uh, you know that it's close enough mm -hmm. to hear, um, but it, this this listening is not giving you a great deal of additional insight. Do we have yeah. anything to sort of hide behind where we are? I mean, you could definitely hide at this point. Mm -hmm. There are patches of marsh grass. There are, uh, I mean, there's, if you really wanted to, water here deep enough to submerge yourself. Uh, there's <laughs> there's different approach. If you want to go full Rambo first oh, blood, you know, <laughs> the weed. <laughs> no, but I just kind of, feel like because Pando can't identify what that is, like her natural instinct is to kind of scoot like down and, and out of the way. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we all, we're all hiding. I'm just, yes. As, as I can't as really as hide. Yeah. I just sort of stop. I, <laughs> well, I also, I mean, <laughs> I the exocomp is sort of really a tree in the desert. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm just going to like kind of hide his, like glowing eyes. And... <laughs> well, uh, okay, I am going to, as a benevolent DM, I'm going to extend your stealth check to this hide. Um, and uh, here's here's what happens. Uh, a few moments later, the this rustling and gentle splashing noise gets louder and louder as it is coming in your direction. It seems to be heading directly towards you, uh, opposite the direction you have been moving. And coming into the moonlight, you see two tabaxi uh, who clearly are trying to move quietly, but are moving quickly as if they are being pursued. Uh, and they are kind of splashing a little bit. They're pushing through, uh, you know, grasses. They're staying low, uh, but, and they have not immediately seen you. You have a moment to react here. This, but it seems like the path they're taking is going They're to heading right off. towards you. Okay. Yeah. If you stay still, they may walk right past you. It's hard to know, like, but, um, but that's the, they're going the direction you came from. Yeah. Is one of them remember her name? all black? Yeah. One of them is all black. What's, and what's her name? Festina. Festina. I'm writing it down. I keep thinking of Uncle Fester. So I was Uncle Fester. I was thinking of Festina Peach, which is a dogfish head. Oh, peach beer that was delicious. <laughs> mm, is delicious. The Berliner Weiss. <laughs> Festina. Why don't we just wait until she gets close? And yeah. We'll just say Festina. Jump out of no, <laughs> no, then, then as they walk by, we'll just say Festina. <laughs> That's not creepy at all. In unison, <laughs> right. one, two, right. three. Bastida. Yeah, we don't know how close the thing is. Just following them. them. We don't know how close the thing is. Just following them. It's let true. Let get a little closer, and we'll just kind of quietly say Bastina. Mm -hmm. Or let them walk past us and um, attack whatever is chasing them. It's true. Uh, unless it's not close. It, it doesn't sound like a very, very bottom thing. That it's not. 
<laughs> yeah. All right. So, a, a moment or two later, these two tabaxi are essentially among you. Uh, they're less than five feet away. Destina. So, at that point, you. Um, <laughs> so, uh, both of them jump. <laughs> like, Air in the back of their neck. Yeah. <laughs> Arch, we've all, arch we've all seen back. Cats do right. that. Um, they do, to their credit, they do manage to stay kind of quiet as they do. They don't shriek <laughs> or make a lot of noise. Because... Take off running in the direction that they just came from. Yeah. <laughs> but they, uh, but they are very startled and immediately have blades out. So yeah. one, um, Festina has two daggers, yeah. uh, which are now out mm-hmm. in her hands. And oh, she's... so we do know it's Festina. <laughs> Yeah, well, well she's a yeah, I mean, you I mean, based on Marx's description. DM slip up. Oh, uh, <laughs> giving away free, free information. Uh, so she's got daggers out yeah. and and is looking wildly left and right uh, and sees you right away once you, announce, once you announce once you announce yourself. Just, sees you. Right. Um, the other is uh, carrying a short bow mm-hmm. uh, and has, in a moment, an arrow knocked and is kind of you know back and forth looking. Okay. And Pando um, kind of jumps up and is like, Mark sent us. Mark's and Hades sent us. Okay. Um, Hades? Hades? Hades. 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 Uh, Your time has come. <laughs> yeah, so, when as soon as you say the name Marx, uh, she visibly relaxes a little, mm-hmm. and now her anxiety and tension are once again directed behind her. Yeah. Uh, and she looks at her companion and says, "Thank Azul a break." And then she looks at all of you and says, "We've got to move. It's." Weird out here. <laughs> how many how many blades are behind you? Made out of any blades. Are they blades? She looks <laughs> so this is where she looks uh, a little confused for a moment. And now is when we are going to roll for initiative. Okay. Ooh. Because uh, chasing these tabaxi. These moments always make me a little nervous. Just take this. <laughs> this little mappy map out here. Oh, I'm just still stand to do this. Oh, my God. oh, I saw a drawing on the other side and I got all like, ooh, he drew something out. Uh, I'm going to ask you to put your um, minis out, uh, kind of where, in relativity to where you think you this were hiding. Both of you? Yeah. yeah. And. Go. Short one tabaxi here, so I'm going to use well, someone who talking about him before. Definitely doesn't look like a tabaxi, but that's okay. We'll throw, let we'll throw this guy out here as the exocomp. Okay, right. kind of. So, I feel like Panda was like hiding toward the middle, but like behind something. So here's our two tabaxi, just for our purposes. <laughs> this will be Festina with the, with the war hammer for some reason, <laughs> uh, and her little friend uh, right behind her. Little, little friend. Um, but well, finished it. hustling out of the swamp behind are some amazing big bugs. Uh, that are seem to be in pursuit of the two of them. Uh, and she uh, looks at all of you and says, I don't know if you've spent a lot of time out here, but this isn't normal behavior for muck wrigglers. They are clearly being stirred up by something. Manipulated. That doesn't mean they won't eat us, though. So we either move fast, or we exterminate them. Ouch. What do you think? Oh, let's exterminate. So the muck wrigglers are um, represented here by these uh, rubber cockroaches, but the actual you, if you need to move this the actual look of these things is uh, somewhere between insect and amphibian. Uh, they are not um, chitinous uh, like an insect. They have sort of uh, rubbery uh, looking skin. Uh, 
but they are uh, kind of shaped this way. They have big uh, skin flap like wings that uh, are kind of bat frog kind of uh, of a vibe. Uh, they you can see them uh, doing sort of short hops as they pursue. Uh, it doesn't seem to be capable of true flight, at least not at a glance. Um, but what is insect-like uh, with them, uh, though their skin is sort of amphibian, uh, spongy looking, uh, on the front of them, their faces have large multifaceted insect-like eyes and mandibles, sharp sort of horn or chitinous looking mandibles. Uh, and fairly large claws on the ends of their uh, webbed feet. Okay. Uh, and they are hustling towards you. They are each the size of a, a like a large dog or maybe a Shetland pony. Uh, they're they're good size. Uh, and you see four of them uh, sort of skittering across the bog in your direction. Okay. Can I roll a nature check that we would know any kind of sure. particular weaknesses oh. or? Do it. Ooh. Something like that. Need nature, Sorry. check it up. Could I do that too? Yeah. 16. Oh, look at that. Can we... <laughs> I'll oh, see you. That Thank doesn't you. help. 16. Um, they don't like fire or something? I don't know. <laughs> so I will say... Um, <coughs> bless you. This is their middle tier form and then they grow larger wings. <laughs> I think we really have wonderful things I suppose. Yeah, I would, I would say um, you have heard of these things. Uh, you've never seen them, but you've, you've heard of them with a 16. And I think you could safely say uh, you're confident they don't actually fly, mm -hmm. uh, that these wings are more um, vestigial. vestigial. And you're pretty sure they're not poisonous. Pretty sure, that's good. Good enough for me. <laughs> pretty sure. Uh, okay, so we're gonna roll for initiative. I just uh, Oh, sure. Freya, what'd you get? 13. 13. Uh, Pando? Sorry. It's okay. 18. 18. Air? 20. 20. Ooh. And Pottle. I'm bringing up the rear with a two. A solid <laughs> two, ready to go. Okay. Well very distributed. Good. Because I like rolled a... a natty one, <laughs> and then I added my bonus of it one. Was, it was kind of like a price is right sort of guess. <laughs> you know, at the end, all encompassing. You know, yeah. like. <laughs> uh, oops. Okay. So, Air, that means you are up first. Mm -hmm. You got it. Um, air feels no need to go towards these creatures at this moment, because I think she thinks that these creatures are gonna are plain motivated to come to her. So she's gonna instead um, cast uh, armor of Agathos. Okay, I like it. And gain her ten hit points, ten temporary hit points. Uh, so though it's dark, it's hard to see what happens here, but. Uh, I think those who are standing near air suddenly feel a little chill uh, in the air as a uh, sort of a crust of frost appears oh, like uh, around her body. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. Any movement or... Oh, that's what I was going to say. Actually, I was like, now that I'm thinking about it, air is going to move. Wow. But just past... Just like, oh, there. Okay. Very good. Uh, Next up, I think, is Freya. Oh, yeah. Oh, or... Or did I get that no, backwards? Um, I had 13. You had 13, and, and Pando had 18. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. So, Pando, you're up next. Okay. So, I was just checking my ranges of things. Um, so, I'm going to move up a little bit, just so that I'm within a better range to be able to do anything, and to kind of try to block and protect these guys, even though they have daggers, they might be able to do so themselves. Yeah, watch them just be like insane fighters. Right, and, and I'm just like, silly. whoa, right, we're good. <laughs> no, I didn't see that coming. Okay. Okay, and uh, anything you want to do then? Action, bonus action. Thorn whip them. You might be in range of something. One, two, three, Am I? Five, six, 
Mm-hmm. You're within six. thirty. You're within thirty. Feet. I am within thirty there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sorry, my math was off. Yeah. So just with this first one right here, I'm gonna do my anytime attack of thorn whip. Okay. It's mighty four. Yeah, this one, uh, I think as you... Oh, that was, that was just damage. You want to roll. You want to roll, actually attack. Oh, this one first? Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Close call there. 15. Ah, 15. <laughs> Four. And then, yeah, if... 15 does hit. Okay, okay. so uh, you your th- thorn whip uh, flies out and cracks into mm-hmm. uh, the top of one of these creatures, uh, tearing a long gouge uh, in its... Um, Kind of spongy back. You did said four points of damage. Mm-hmm. Okay, very good. Uh, anything else on your turn? No, not right now. All right, Freya, you're up. Oh, I'm gonna go straight forward, right here, and uh, and I'm gonna rage. And when I rage today, everyone looks at me. Something happens that has not been seen before in the group. <laughs> there is an image. There is a. There is. You think you might glimpse a polar bear for a moment as Ooh, as, like as my rage as my rage uh, comes in. Um, I think particularly polar... here at night uh, in the moonlight, yes. it is more it's visible. This spectral polar, polar bear white. that kind of spectral aspects polar behind you like that. Then you so can we shake it off. A always lot thought of that you were that you were large, but all of a sudden there's a larger <laughs> polar bear <laughs> image really over the top of you. Really big bear. That's yes. Beautiful. So yeah, so uh, so I'm raging with a bear this time. Nice. Um, and I'm there. I can't really. I don't really. I mean, I can. I could. I could. What the hell? I might as well. Just the only thing I have that would reach to anybody where I am right now, actually, is a boomerang. <laughs> so well, you can definitely throw a boomerang. Throw or boomerang. I will remind you, you can hold an action. We talked about that earlier. Oh, so right. this is one of those situations where that could be useful. You can hold an attack until something comes within range of you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me of that. I will hold an action with my greatsword. Um, right. A melee attack with my greatsword. All right, so you're going to hold an attack with your greatsword mm-hmm. until one of these critters comes within melee range of you. Yes. Sounds good to me. Uh, so, speaking of, next up are the uh, aforementioned critters, and they are going to start hustling forward. So. Oh, did. Uh, but Potom goes? Or no? Mm-hmm. Potom's going last. Going uh, oh, after the creatures. Yes. Here, first one's going to move up here. And it is going to <laughs> attempt to bite cool. Pando. I get to do, be the first one to react. With its after. mandibles. Does a 15 hit you, Pando? Ooh. So 15 higher or meet or exceed your armor class? I'm 12. Okay, mm-hmm. yes. So it does take a bite of you. Uh, you will take three points of piercing damage. And I need you to make a strength saving throw as these large, wide mandibles wrap around your leg. Is that STR? Yeah. Okay, uh, so in addition to taking that damage, you are now uh, grappled. Mm-hmm. So this creature has its mandibles wrapped around you and your leg is stuck there. So your movement is zero. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't restrict you in any other way. You just mm-hmm. can't move from the spot where you currently are uh, until you are out of that grip. Uh, next, this guy is going to come up here and try to bite Freya. It's a natural 20. Oh, wow, max damage. Uh, well, it's a good thing I have resistance to all damage. <laughs> it is a good thing. Uh, so that's going to be 10 points of piercing damage reduced oh, to 5. Oh, that's more than that does. <laughs> and I need you to make a strength saving throw as well. Okay. Are they rolling? No, they're not, are they? I was just wondering if they're rolling any kind of strength saving ability like, check. I do that right that. here. Oh. It's mm-hmm. just, a normal, just part of their attack. Right there? Mm-hmm. No. What, are, what are we doing? Strength, strength saving, saving throw. throw. Oh, uh, Oh, I'm yeah, here. no, the, these are your saving throws. What's that? So, yeah. athletics? No, no. Okay. Just, uh, they, it's just, it just, 21. Yeah, it's okay. it plus, yeah, 21, plus okay. Six on it. So this, <laughs> same deal, this thing tries to, to hold on to your leg, but you just kick it off, uh, so it's not able to keep its grip on you. And if I've held a melee attack, does that happen now? Uh, yes. So this creature is now within range of you, so you mm-hmm. can make, uh, a, you can make With your attack. With my greatsword? Yeah. 
17. 17 hits. Do your damage to the muck wriggler. 14. Holy cow, yeah. Okay, so this thing uh, takes a bite out of your leg, and uh, you just look down and two-handed plunge your greatsword right through its back. True to its name, it wriggles in the muck for a moment and then expires. <laughs> uh, not a problem. Oh, these aren't that bad. No. <laughs> no, these are not not strong things, but they're not, you don't want to get bit. Uh, all right, next critter is going to... <clears throat> Yeah, it can get to you. It's going to also try to take a bite out of Freya. That is, wow, they're rolling really well. That's a 22. God. You're going to take three points of piercing damage reduced okay. to one. And I need you to make another strength saving throw as this one tries to hang on to you. 21. Not a problem. So you're just going to take the one damage. And then this guy is going to uh, use his jump ability. Uh, to leap and glide. It's kind of terrifying. Glide. Oh, yeah, we're yeah. here. That is a uh, big and one attack action. you, Air. You bet. Come at me. That uh, is going to be a 16 to hit. Okay, that hits. Okay. And you will take six points of piercing damage mm -hmm. and again make a strength saving throw, please. You bet. And you know what? You, sir, are going to take 10 points of damage. Uh, Definitely, this this critter will do that. Um, so I think that's how that works. It's pre. It's the yeah, just in. Oh, no, it, yeah, well, even, oh no, it's always ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and my straight check is seven. Well, it's irrelevant because oh, okay. uh, the this thing crystallizes <laughs> as the ice it bites down, and the ice uh, the sort of frost seems to spread through its mandibles up into its head, uh, and you just sort of kick against its uh, bite and the head just <laughs> cracks off and falls uh, in a chunk of ice to the ground. Arm of Agathus, it's a hot spell. Potom, you're up. <laughs> um, well, seeing how well everyone is doing, Potom just kind of is like, hey, maybe I'll read this book. No, I'm just <laughs> um, let's, Get up here, and then I, um, well, I think that we can get a, a ray of frost phaser blast in on this guy over here. Sure. Do, 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 do. Ray of frost in is an attack roll, or is it? It is an attack okay. roll. Uh, 22. Yeah, that hits. Nice. And eight. Eight. Um, and this is the one that... You would have the one that already got thorn whipped? Uh, yeah. What, mm -hmm. okay. yeah, oh, yeah. Working on Pando. Yeah. Uh, similar vibe, actually, to Ayers. Uh, you crystallize this thing in a, a flurry of frozen magic, and it uh, just is an ice statue now. And the Iron Defender moves up, and will do a uh, force-empowered rend. Ooh. Um, it, they use my, I'm just going to use the exact same because they use my uh, spell attack modifier. So they got 20. Definitely hits. And it's 1d8 damage. So we'll just use the Ray of Frost dice again. And that is another 8. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Wow. Nice. Um, the Steel Defender clomps up and just <laughs> tears this thing in half. I think it grabs the mandibles and just yanks them apart. <laughs> Uh, splitting this creature's head in okay, half. I was like, as the stuff hits her. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> it's quick, it's messy, it's ugly. Mm -hmm. And uh, a moment later, as you all don't even appear to really be breathing heavy, uh, Festina turns and looks at you and says, who are you? <laughs> And we're the monster squad. <laughs> we're Your the, grandpa sent us. We're the Frosty Four. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Which oh, is funny because no. I could have used my cold breath. Right. Please, God, do not trademark that right now. That, is, <laughs> that, that cannot be canon. I'm just saying, Canon can do stuff with cold too, so. Right. I mean, we may be. 
Um, so she, she turns and looks at her companion and says, um, you know this is a bigger problem. And then turns to all of you and says, Muckriglers are not aggressive. Something was chasing them. Oh. <laughs> they would only attack if they feel like they have no other direction to go. I don't know what my grandfather told you or why you're out here, but we were attacked. Last night we've been on the run since, trying to avoid the blades. I can only imagine this means they're close. So we either run right now, or we maybe wait in ambush. You seem fairly capable. I'll follow your lead. I think, that first off, you should put this mask on. Hmm. Can I hand over the Yogagawai mask? Okay. Mm -hmm. She looks very confused as to why you would be making that request. Uh, what? What? Ultimately, if the blades are searching for you and... Well, you seem pretty uh, distinct. Your features are pretty distinct. But if you are disguised, and this will definitely disguise you, then we only have your wee friend over here to worry about. But ultimately, if the blades are chasing you, they're not chasing us. Mm -hmm. And we could just be out here camped. Mm -hmm. So instead of getting into a run-in with the blades, I mean, stuff happens. But ultimately, if we could just avoid that by being a camp. Kind of Simple the travelers. <laughs> <laughs> um, Merchants peddling our wares. <laughs> so, first of all, she, she looks at this mask and is sort of incredulous because <laughs> she doesn't know what this mask does. And she's like, you think me putting a little mask on my face is going to prevent the blades from finding us? I do. <laughs> and we also, agree. what about mittens? They're looking for all of us. They've been chasing us for the last 24 hours, anyone, any of us that they find out here in the swamp, they're just executing. <laughs> Mittens. Get to this what bag. What if I put this bag on the ground? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, a bag. I, I also want to be clear that just because we're using a tiny mini for Mittens, <laughs> Mittens is a normal size tabaxi. He's not like a micro tabaxi. <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, but, but cats' bodies are fluid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can take on it. Just liquid, liquid cats. Cats are liquid. Uh, I think. I ultimately, don't think... I mean, or do we just run? Uh, mittens, if you are comfortable. But and I, I mean, this is danger is imminent. We could try to leave. But ultimately, I think maybe our best bet is to lie in ambush, and I have this bag that you can fit in, <laughs> and we'll leave open. So you can breathe. But it's the bag of holding, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. All right. So here, here's before we move any further with this. Okay. I, wanted... I want you to make a persuasion check because what you are trying, what you are currently doing, is without a great deal of explanation, you are trying to convince Somebody one cat to disguise themselves with a mask that definitely doesn't look like it will disguise them. And the other thing you're asking someone to do is crawl into a backpack. Uh, but we and, did just save their lives. No, I, understandable. That's why you're getting to make a persuasion check. And magic is a thing in this world. It's not like people have yeah. never heard of this. Yeah. But it is the, under duress, and, and, and this is an intense ask to a certain extent. So make a persuasion uh, check. I, Anybody want to assist me in this? I, I, yeah, I'll do it. I can help. Just I, can, I have a plus Freya's three. just like, I, get in the bag. No, I, <laughs> oh, see, it. that's the thing. I have a plus three for intimidation or a plus three for... for, for oh, see, my 11. persuasion, that plus three never helps. Oh, well, well if someone, I, I just yeah. make it at advantage. If someone's assisting, okay. 11 is with advantage? 11 is with advantage. Okay. Um, the first one was one. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up no. I, I think... Um, Realistically, I think they both look at you and they're like, are we going to run or fight? And then they kind of look at everybody else because they're not convinced. <laughs> Whatever's going on here with all of this, <laughs> they're like, this, this rock gnome trying to get me in a backpack. Like, I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> I, they want to they run or they want to know if you're ready to fight Blades. Uh, Air wants to know, we heard that, uh, Air asks, we heard that there was 20 Blades that were involved in the attack. Is that 
an accurate? It, it probably was close to that. No. Uh, I mean, they and they wiped most just... of us out quickly. But at this point, Mittens and I have been on the run for a whole day, just trying to avoid some of the squads that are wandering around. I have no any, no idea how many are behind us, uh, but. I'm hoping more of us survived and are out there trying to get away. It's not like they know us or know our faces. They just hit the hideout and we all ran. So they don't know your faces. Well, she's very I don't even know how they knew our, our hideout was there. Honestly, we're just running for our lives. Now listen, those muck wrigglers were being driven ahead. We need to make a choice now. I say we That's fight. What... Right, or, or do we go? Everyone's just... ready to fight, but I feel like maybe the smart choice is wrong. But we can. Yeah. But also, true. if they don't know their if they don't know their faces and they aren't willing to do um, our little like hiding tricks, if we run back to Marks and we are all just together around yeah. a wagon with this merchant who's regularly coming through, maybe we can fight there. But maybe we don't have to if they don't know their faces. I, I yeah, I that's ready. actually not yeah. a bad. Yeah. But we can be ready run. to fight, but we might not have to. But let's, let's just show her what this mask does. So cover mm-hmm. yourself with this mask, and we can hopefully get... And, and we, in a pinch, mittens can jump in the bag. <laughs> you know? Like it's, a, like, it's a really good option. I think they're just like an extermination mode. Like, they don't care about who you look like or what they look like. Or they're just... They'll, they'll kill us, they'll kill them, they'll kill anyone they come across. At this yeah. point... At this point, if there's further discussion, I am going to take the choice out of your hands. No. So you need to Let's decide, go. are you running run or, or run. setting run. up an ambush? Run. You're run. running. What direction are you running? Back toward Marks. Uh, Back toward Marks? The rocks. Or towards the rocks? Sorry, the rocks. Well, because I think that's like the only way we know how to get back. Right, right. Oh, for yeah. directional purposes. Yeah. Can I just... Uh, I would love to do an investigation check to figure out which way is the best way to navigate us back to Saltwater Marsh. Uh, you can do a survival check okay. if you want to try to get a sense of direction out here in the swamp. Sure. Twelve. You got a guess. Okay. You've got a guess about what, if you wanted to, to take a direct beeline towards Salt March Landing, you have a guess in your mind of what direction that is. That's where, that's where he's going to meet us. Also, I will tell you, it is probably a little, it's probably very close to midnight or a little after at this point. And I guess it's better than nothing. I I say we go. We can head that direction. I don't, without a visual, I don't really know where the rocks are in relationship to stuff. So to give you a, to to give you a reminder sense, Mm -hmm. from where you were camped with Marks and Hayde, you headed due south. Mm-hmm. So the, the road between Salt March Landing and Featherwand is nearly perfectly east-west. Okay. Uh, you were closer to Salt March Landing than you were to Featherwand, and you headed due south to find, oh. you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Due south to find the, um, so the rocks. I need a visual. Sure. So you said, so So you've got an east-west road from the coast. West Road from the coast. Yep. Like this. Salt March Landing is on the coast, right there. Your camp, Mark's camp, uh, was probably approximately here. You were most of the way. And you had to do south from there uh, a couple hours travel. Like this ish. To uh, the tree and the rocks. From that point, you went west to find uh, west towards the hideout for about an hour. Okay. So with your survival check, you've got a general sense of the direction you would want to start heading if you were trying to go straight to Salt Lake Did they come running from? From, so we're, from that direction. So, so you, they came you didn't make it way. to the hideout. They were, okay. they were heading we were from like the there, general direction of the hideout towards you. Toward us. Okay, so if we go back this direction toward the rocks, it'll kind of take us like this-ish. Yes. Maybe. We can go like that. Back. Well, and that's water that we're running toward, right? Yeah. So once we hit water, we know that we've gone 
as far as we can. Yeah, I mean, eventually you'll north. find the ocean, right. depending on how, how far you go. Okay. But, but I'll, I will just remind you, uh, when I say an hour journey and that kind of stuff, that, that was on foot through marsh. Right. Uh, it's much slower going than when we say, like, how much journey you had on a wagon, mm -hmm. on a trail. Uh, so the distance to Salt March Landing is not insignificant. It's right. not like you're going to run for two hours and get to the town mm -hmm. or get to the coast. Marching through the swamp, you're probably, I mean, with a 12, I'd say you probably guess it's a, it's a day of travel if you're just going through the swamp. If you get back to the trail, it's something different. So we head back to the trail? Which I would, we would need the rocks just for reference. Yeah. I, yeah, that was I'd say we head back to the rocks. All right, sounds like the party is uh, heading back towards the rocks. Quickly. So, so quickly. This is another place where I have to ask you to make a decision. Is it about speed or is it about stealth? I think so. Speed at this mm -hmm. point. <laughs> okay. All right. So abandoning stealth, you mm -hmm. uh, you focus on going as fast as you quickly can. Uh, I want everybody, please, to make a Constitution check. I bet. Uh, this is about stamina right now. It's about can you push yourself through the swamp to maintain a, a fast pace. Fifteen. Okay. Two. All right. It's and tough. That was me rolling for the steel defender because I'm definitely riding. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> to keep up with, with everyone. With the tiny legs. It's um, it's tough going through the swamp at this point. It is. It's dark. It's late. You all have not rested for a long mm -hmm. time, uh, and now you have two exhausted, scared tabaxi with you who have also been awake for nearly two days. Uh, and though you are pushing yourselves to go as quickly as possible, it's not as fast as you hoped. Uh, after what feels like more than an hour, you do finally uh, get back in the vicinity of the rocks. You didn't really hold a true path uh, the whole time, but you do manage to spot the tree. Uh, you're a little further south than you had planned to be. So you can turn at this point northward and get back to the rocks specifically, or you can keep just plowing through the swamp if, if your goal is just to head east. What's the plan? I'm kind of in favor of getting on the trail if we right, can. If we can. I, mean, yeah. north, I mean, it's probably not, probably more likely to meet somebody, but. I, that is my only concern about getting to the trail is running into Blade Patrol, since they're out. Mm -hmm. But we know we have one behind us. Um, yeah, I guess. And I feel like we're just, we're not at our, like, best if we're in this kind of, like, slow, trudgy, marshy, at least maybe we could. I mean, I think you're right that we run the risk of visibility, but maybe we'll be um, in on like better ground <clears throat> for us. The other thing is, if it's just midnight, we're gonna come up to their camp. We're yeah, it's like, like Marks now. is up there, right? I would imagine. You know. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's so after. It's, you've been on. You've been slugging through the mud for about an hour, so it's. You know, it's not like you guys have Timexes on your wrist, but it's. Mm -hmm. It's after midnight at this point. And uh, so, but Marks and and Hayd were gonna, gonna wait. Out wait. In the morning. Yeah, That's they right. were gonna break out in the morning. So if we're mm -hmm. heading back. I think we should head back toward where they are. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know. And all be together for whatever comes. Um, I don't know. What do you yeah, I mean, think? I. All right, I so it yeah. sounds like you're turning north towards the rocks right now? North toward the rocks. Okay. And to our fate of fighting mm -hmm. blades. Yep. <laughs> uh, all right, so you turn uh, and head in the direction of the tree, and uh, probably about. 15, 20 minutes of, uh, again, continued hard slog through the marsh, you uh, approach these rocks again. And as you step up onto them, kind of kick some of the mud uh, off your feet and reorient yourself for another push north, uh, you hear a shout 
from behind you, uh, and the blade patrol that has been in pursuit of you has right. caught up. Uh, and Christina, I again implore you, please, please put the please, mask please, please on. Please put the mask on. I think it's a good idea, Christina. She'll put it on. Okay. Sure. Amazing. So. And Mittens has a heart attack when he sees her. Mittens is very surprised <laughs> uh, at what happens. Um, so she's got it on and she looks at you and says, great, now what? Are okay. we going to prepare ourselves or what? They're about to kill us. Uh, and she's got her knives out, uh, which now looks like she's holding a short sword in each hand. What <laughs> <laughs> will you get in? <laughs> 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 there is a chance that we can get out of this without a violent interaction. Uh, Mittens just runs north. Okay. He's Fair. he is so, totally he's freaked out. Yeah. He does not trust any of this situation. Uh, he's not getting in no bag. He just he just takes off. Uh, north. So Mittens is gone. Give me this little Mittens guy. Back with Molly. Mittens. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, he's totally spooked. Um, and at this point, uh, you see... We're just adventurers. <laughs> just adventurers. Approaching. Got, got Someone start march. laughing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's very scary for him to laugh. <laughs> you see, uh, approaching here, from coming out of the dark, uh, a squad of blades. Uh, four, four of them, sort of uh, familiar, familiarly uh, armed and equipped. One who is clearly an officer of some kind, or a, a sergeant or a captain of some uh, leader, uh, and what appears to be a squad mage uh, at his side. Mm. The squad mage is holding aloft a, uh, a series of magical lights. There are three or four uh, glowing spheres kind of hovering over the group, uh, casting a dim light across uh, the entire group and the uh, leader calls out to the group of you halt where you are and await the imperial justice uh, quick question mm -hmm. is this more than an hour after we fought the the, the cockroaches mm -hmm. yes yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah you've been on the on the trail for quite some time uh so do we have to be oh. i mean rather than going yet. like blades in can't we just be like Oh, thank goodness. Are you guys here to take care of well, those do, giant bugs? You yeah. can do whatever like, you want. This guy are... this guy just called out yeah. to you to halt and await, uh, await their justice. Great. Yeah. Yeah, we were on the road, right? We were on the road. We got driven off the road by these giant bugs. bugs. I saw their we goo to, on them. Yeah, we had to fight them. What is going oh. on around here? Are you okay. guys here to take care of this? So, uh, as you engage in this performance, uh, these folks are going to approach. So you've halted. Uh, the blades surround you. Uh, they move into uh, flanking positions on all four corners. The uh, leader or captain steps up here. The squad mage remains back mm. a little ways and the dancing lights circle above your heads. Um, Two of the blades have crossbows out and pointed at you. The others are armed with curved scimitars. Uh, the captain has his scimitar out as well. Uh, and the squad mage is uh, standing at the ready. Um, as you start weaving this tale, mm -hmm. I want to know who is taking the lead on this conversation and who is assisting. I think you should lead and all assist. Who's the, who's I, the face I, I feel here. like Panda kind of just out of nowhere was like, thank God you guys are here. Whatever God's name is. Uh, are you here that? to take care of these bugs? 
<laughs> What's going it, so. on? <laughs> yes, exactly. Thank whoever <laughs> yes. finally made it. No, I, I'll Thank back Thank the up. emperor. <laughs> I'll back her up on here, here too. <laughs> oh, by Timoro, you're, you've saved us. <laughs> oh, by Timoro. Okay, so, uh, so you're like the face it. of this. Yeah. I, I would like you to... I would like you to roll a deception check. Okay. And you may roll it at advantage because you Not are persuasion? getting... No, because you are lying. But persuasively. <laughs> 13. Did, was that an advantage? Oh, sorry. Roll twice advantage. and take the highest. Mm-hmm. Sorry. 12. Oh. Okay. 13. 13. 13. Uh... The captain uh, looks at you, and seeing your heritage and uh, hearing you react in this way, um, immediately is like, my lady, what are you doing this far in the swamp? And who are these with you? Uh, We wouldn't be this far in the swamp. But these giant bugs came at us, and we just took off running. Um, but we're here, my comrades and I, um, for poop. We've decided to get in the poop business. Trading business. Trading mission. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. He um, looks very confused uh, by that uh, and says, This is a dangerous place to be, my lady. We have uncovered a nest of rebels in the area. Vicious thugs who have been striking back against the who have been uh, striking at the heart of the empire. Uh, they are bl- a bloodthirsty lot. And uh, uh, sir, sir, uh, it happens to be my fault. As I thought, I could get us here to assault uh, assault march landing much faster by taking an alternative route. Uh, as it seems. I wasn't very close to the ground on this one. <laughs> Terrible. Um, <laughs> he attacks immediately. Um, he uh, looks at you and says, Even acknowledge you? Yeah. He says, A rock gnome. What a strange party you find yourself in, my lady. Ah, uh, I do not understand why you would be out at this time of night and traveling like this, but. I must insist that you allow uh, my squad to escort you back to the road. Uh, It is too dangerous to be out at this time, and we are in pursuit, as I said, of vile fugitives. Panda flashes a smile and says, thanks, that'll help a lot. Our cart's right up this direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Well, with that... The cart's not there anymore. No, but they're camping. Yeah, yeah, it's all still. They're, it's, they're they're all still we're in the middle of the night. We're camping right yeah. 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 No, it's okay. The time I keep yeah. going back to like how much time is. Yeah, I mean, it's probably <laughs> it's probably approaching two in the morning at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, so the the blades fall into step around you. Um, you're going to be marching with these folks for a couple hours Mm -hmm. uh, through the swamp. (laughs) And so we're going to make a group performance check for you and Festina to maintain the ruse that you are who you say you are. Mm -hmm. And uh, because this captain uh, is going to engage you in conversation, uh, he's going to be poking at this because he is still deeply unsettled. Right. Uh, 20. Is it deception? No, no performance. performance. And a performance. 20. Air is a little lesbian here. 15. 20, 19. 15, 19, 10. Okay. And Festina. I think it's because of the whole rock gnome thing that the guy just is already <coughs> suspicious of me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you're an odd mm-hmm. bunch. Okay. It's not like he came upon five elves in the woods and he was yeah. like, oh, elves. It's three yeah. elves and two weird things. Three uh, well, mostly elves. Well, Do we just half keep half elf, half, 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 half elf, two elves? Yeah, and, and the most generic-looking so elf right. soldier, yeah, but it's uh, dark. elf guard. Yeah. yeah it's dark. Do we uh, keep him engaged in conversation of dumb 
is this sure like, yeah you can ramble on and on about yeah. dumb yeah, as you walk like, to show like our fine. interest and like why the hell we would all be together yeah, yeah. Like, oh yeah we're so <laughs> into dung <laughs> <laughs> can't get enough of it <laughs> so uh so there's good news and bad news here mm. the good news is uh for the most part you keep this kind of rambling discussion sure. of the <laughs> dung business going uh, it seems to really uh, throw them off uh, the scent. Uh, there's it very quickly. Well, of course, yeah, it does. <laughs> it very quickly changes the tone of this march from suspicion to more like annoyance. Annoyance. <laughs> like, what did we uh-huh. get ourselves into here that we're escorting dung merchants through the swamp? I mean, it's so ridiculous. No one would make that up. <laughs> I'm just gonna go and like uh, go right up next to Festina yeah. here. <laughs> the, so the bad news of this is Festina is Suspicious. visibly nervous. Yeah. Uh, now, she doesn't look like herself, yeah. but she uh, does not speak uh, ever. Uh, She's and, in, mute. and in fact, at moments, uh, is addressed by one of the soldiers and does not respond. She just look, looks at the ground and keeps walking. Uh, and so there is some suspicion there, but every time it gets weird, one of you, uh, maybe you know, Freya bursts into a, a tale of the Northland, or uh, you bring up some other intricacy of the dung trade, uh, and it seems to be okay. Uh, but collectively, you can tell they're weirded out by Festina a little bit. She's not doing this well. I think the real concern is what happens when we get back to the cart. But. Oh, yeah. So the march goes on. Uh, it is a, a, continues to be a difficult slog, made easier somewhat by the dancing lights that are uh, helping illuminate your path uh, and the guidance of these blades. Uh, but they are still in formation like this around you as you get closer and closer to the trail. Uh, so. At one point, the uh, the two in the lead call back uh, to the captain and say, uh, "We're approaching the road, sir. Uh, anything you want to do before you?" Uh, Are we approaching reach the, the road, road to exactly where our camp was, or like another part of the road? Uh, you don't know yet. You don't. You don't currently see the camp. So I can't. Uh, all you do, all you, all you've heard is that the the guys who are up ahead of you <clears throat> call back. Mm-hmm. Hey, and, and Freya's really loud. Oh, good God! I hope our cart's still here. <laughs> ah. <laughs> um, Hannah's looking around to see if she can see if they've hidden it or if they've hidden themselves. Because much like Freya, she would want to like walk into the road and be like. Oh, I'm so glad you've brought us back safely to our cart where our other comrades are to like indicate to them that like this is we know what's happening. They are okay if they play along with this scenario. Um, but if they're not in sight, then we can just be like, thanks, have a great night and start Mark's walking so toward that. Smart enough to play along. Okay. Play along if he's there. All right, make a perception check. Me? Mm-hmm. 25. Good. Um, All right. At this point, uh, you recognize uh, the area. You realize that you're probably going to be re-entering the road uh, just a few minutes to the east of where your actual camp was set up, where Mark's pulled off and you helped uh, set this up. So uh, when you hit the road, you will need to backtrack west a little bit to find uh, where they are. Okay. Or if you wanted to, you could direct the group now to start heading through the swamp in that direction. So you come up mm-hmm. on the camp from the swamp. It's up to you, but you have a sense like of where that, you are. Yeah, I like that we're entering not by our camp. Yeah. Okay. We can, we can make get the road and get yeah. rid of these blades. And we can make like we're going to set up camp there like so they don't follow us or offer to escort us somewhere else. Uh, All right, it is almost dawn as you step into the road. It's starting to get uh, just a little bit light to the east. You're seeing a a dim light there. 
um, as you step out onto the road. The blades fall into a defensive formation on either side of you as they have been. Uh, and the captain addresses you again and says, uh, you said you had a camp and a wagon nearby, Malay. Where are we taking you? How about that? <laughs> um, so then I guess we're going to head a little bit west. West. The camp is west. Yeah. West. Let's head east. Just be like, oh, camp's gone. It's all right. We'll make our uh, we'll make our camp and meet up with our we, we, cart. Yeah, we have a cart. We've hired a driver for our cart. He may have just been moving on to Salt March. Okay. Who is saying that? Um, I think I'm going to look around like confused as to I don't know where our cart is. And then I just kind of pipe <laughs> up with that. Possibly, possibly the men the. Person that we hired is taking Tabaski, Tabaxi driver. Who knows? Yeah, we, we did get lost in the marsh. May have can't just trust. gone off without us. Uh, can't get help, good help anymore. They're thinking right? that we'll meet him up there. Make a persuasion or deception check. I'll Would it be you, at an advantage you with us? Uh, no, I'm giving you the choice between persuasion. Yeah. I'm giving okay. Freya the choice. Nineteen. A nineteen. Deception. Okay. Uh, so the captain says. Um, very well. Uh, he turns to two of his blades and says, um, I want you to head back west and reconnect with some of the other squads. Tell them that we've peeled off to escort this group to Salt March Landing, and we will meet back up uh, along the trail. And the two of them uh, gather up their gear and uh, prepare to start marching west. So there's four of them still with us? Four with us. Two, two, got, two blades, the captain marks. and the squad mage are marks staying with you to escort you to Salt March Landing. Should we, try to, should we try to dissuade them from so, all four of them? Right, right because we know for a fact they're very, very likely going to run into marks. Right. Those two are. Marks at least, and possibly. But also. Marks they, and Hate are at the camp. Hate. They were going to rest until yeah. dawn, until sunrise, and then have. And we are assuming that if they ran into them, that there would be trouble. But Marx does this all the time. This yeah, he does. And he pulled off of the road. Exactly. And and Hade was going to head back in the other direction, so he's kind of on his own. But I think Marx just on his own has a runs into two and blades did, and can. And we talk did tell Marx that we would meet him at Salt March. Yeah. yeah, right. I think the question <laughs> in your mind right now is probably. Is Hade still at the camp? Yeah. Because if these two walk for 15 minutes and come across a camp that has right. literally one of the rebels yeah. that they injured mm -hmm. sitting at it, it's going to be a thing. Well, we don't know, right? You don't know? So we're just going to have to hope for the best and then prepare for the worst in that direction. And sometimes people die. <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes people, sometimes people die. die. That is true. Sometimes our cover gets blown. So we're heading to Salt March Landing. We know that Marx and Hade are. We don't know if they're still together. I mean, I think Pando turns to them and is like, this has been really kind of you to escort us. We don't feel like we're in any danger now. If you need to go and take care of more pressing matters, we're just going to follow the road to the landing. We might need a little rest right here. Would it be okay if maybe we can take a little rest just right here? Them from mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay, is there like Before? a convince button I can roll? Uh, you've been you've been hammering the convince button over and over and over again. But at this point, uh, this captain uh, is correct. Suspicious. <laughs> I mean, I don't know about suspicious, but here's what I think the response you get is, uh, Madam, I have told you now along this entire journey that there are dangerous criminals roaming this marsh at this moment. I cannot, in good conscience, it is runs against my mission to leave you alone here while this is happening. So I will escort you now to Salt March Landing. And because we have a pressing mission to exterminate these bloodthirsty rebels, I must unfortunately ask that we not pause to rest here, but continue on to Salt March Landing to, to your safety. Okay. I feel like the good captain makes a very good point. Let's <laughs> continue on. It's only an right. hour or two. And this is, uh, we are fortunate indeed. Mm -hmm. So 
so very. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, well, Paid woke up early and started running. <laughs> So off you march. Mm -hmm. uh, to the march. To the march. You travel uh, for about two hours uh, into the slowly rising sun. And as you do, uh, you can see the tension building in uh, Festina's posture. And I think anybody who would like to make an insight check can do so at disadvantage because she is so not looking like herself. Less. Yeah, the lower of the two. 13. Nine. I got a 21 and a 1. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm standing right next to her, so I'm, uh, I'll try to. What the heck? Disadvantage. I think here's the sense you you get here. Mm -hmm. She is happy to not be getting murdered right now, but is looking over her shoulder a lot. She keeps oh, I heard she knows something. She keeps casting glances back down the trail to where she believes her grandfather is. Oh right, yeah. Uh, she's. She's probably not very happy about this. Yeah, well, uh, we're not thrilled either. But. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel like there are, well, no. I mean, well. We're, we're stuck here. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're stuck. There's right. there's nothing that we can do. And even trying to lace it into the conversation about Make being sense. unsatisfied, the, the captain has already made his point. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we're not, we're going to crack it out of this. If there was a less, if there was like two blades, I'd been like, we could smoke these suckers. But yeah, but we still have the battle mage. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Four, there's four and the battle mage. Yeah, there's three plus a battle mage. Two plus a captain plus a battle mage. Right. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, as you uh, make your way along the final stretch of road into Salt March Landing, uh, the captain, uh, wearily at this point, uh, turns to you, Pando, and says, uh, Seems you've been this way before, but I recommend that you get some rest. The beached kraken is just ahead. Uh, we love their brunch. I, yeah. We love it. I cannot wait for one of those beds. <laughs> so tired. Uh, he, he gives you just sort of a, a curt bow uh, and signals to his group, and they turn on their heel and without rest head back up the trail in the other direction. Actually, you know what? No. Uh, what they do is um, they start heading to the stables. Uh, and Eric gives, them a, gives, her, gives them a good... Uh, tip of the jaunty hat. Uh, yeah, and the jaunty and, hat. and mm -hmm. I say under my breath, let's get this cat into a room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, as soon as they are out of earshot, Festina is... No. Living. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Festina, we're getting she, Festina. Yeah. She is not walking, <coughs> not walking towards the beach kraken. She is turning and heading in the other direction. I'm grabbing her by the scruff. I'm grabbing her by the scruff of her neck. Listen, you are exhausted. Your grandfather knows the way and knows the trail better than anyone. He is going to meet us here. He is going to meet us here. This is the plan. We have to rest. We have to rest. And, and be he ready. would be upset if we got you here safely and then you turned and ran back to risk. Um, her response to this is um, frustrated resignation. <clears throat> uh, she is exhausted and afraid and uh, on the edge of shock. And she does give in, but she looks at all of you and says, if my grandfather does not appear here, I will hold you responsible for my loss. There are blades heading in his direction. They do not care about us. I just watched them kill 
my best friends. And now the only family I have is sitting exposed on that road with people who can't wait to exterminate our I realize there's nothing I can do, even if I ran all the way back. Let's rest. Let's be ready. And with that, you head into the beached Kraken. Uh, and uh, if you want to get rooms for the night, someone can uh, spend five silver per room. Uh, How many you... rooms do we need? It's up to you. Uh, I'll throw it in. Silver. Would, yeah, I would imagine. Two rooms are least... two rooms to be comfortable. Yeah. If you're trying to go on the cheap, you could do less. Too. Um, and I would say probably almost immediately you all collapse into a heap. Yeah. I'm gonna put the um, I'm, exocomp in sentinel mode. And I'm going yes in the room <clears throat> with. I'm gonna stay in the room also with uh, with our little kitty cat. Okay. okay. So I paid two, so we have two rooms that we can all spread out. Okay. Uh, so you may all take a long rest. Ooh. In the morning, some of you more early risers uh, are up, and uh, Festina is already up and awake, but has not has not left the room. She's no longer masked uh, or disguised, so she looks like her. Um, and my guess is you gather together in one of the rooms, perhaps, to talk. Uh, and she addresses uh, all of you and says, I want to say what I should have said last night, which is thank you for saving my life. I hope Mittens is okay wherever he is. But I'm deeply, I'm afraid. This came out of nowhere. None of us really knew what we were getting into, I think. None of us knew the Empire was taking this seriously. But I watched so many of my comrades and people I've lived alongside my entire life be cut down <clears throat> ruthlessly by these blades. They, it's never been more clear to me that the Empire does not consider us worthy or even worthwhile. I'm going to leave here today, once I'm sure my grandfather is safe. I'm going to head west, and I'm going to find this other cell that grandfather has been communicating with. And I'm going to kill as many of these elves, sorry, as I possibly can for the rest of my eight lives. I don't know who you are, where you came from, or what brought you to my aid. But I will ask just one last favor. After my grandfather is safe, I'm going to try to disappear him. And I'm going to vanish. I would just ask that you forget we ever met. It would be best for all of us if we never, ever saw each other or thought about each other again. And then she turns and heads for the door. But my cart's of poop. <laughs> He's not here yet. You should just hang out. <laughs> Our mission was to return you to your grandfather. And we are going to see that through. Um, I think she can be convinced to, to wait with you at the tavern. Uh, or up in a room. Did we do a long rest? You yeah, did. Yeah. You can all execute a long rest. Oh, yeah. Um, you, uh, where are you waiting? Are you waiting in the common room? Are you waiting in your rooms? Are you... I don't think that it's uh, that, I, I mean, I, I think that Potom will head over to the stables with the Steel Defender and just check to see if they have arrived yet. Okay. I feel like they should have been here, because if we, I'm right. concerned by the time yet. Well, right. I, well, I it's, am too, so it's early is, morning at this point, mm -hmm. right? So what I'll say is... Um, early morning of the next day. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you arrived in town. Uh, well, I, yeah, actually, let's... So if you take a long rest... Yeah. 
it's not early morning. Right. So uh, let me ask this. I, I don't want to force you into oh. a long rest. Yeah. Oh, I you arrived in town after sunrise. Mm -hmm. So if you chose to take a long rest, that means you're sleeping well into the afternoon. Yeah. Is that the choice? Or instead, would you have come in and like cleaned up, short rest kind of thing, and then posted up to watch for marks? What is... I What's think the that, play? I think Center instead of, of watching, yeah. Right? So I think that I think that we just stick with what we did. That we, we all long rested mode. Yeah. with the defender in sentinel mode, and now that because we were all exhausted, right? Okay. Um, At some point, your body shuts down. Yeah, I think that it was just the now we go, and it was really a wait and see sort of thing anyway. Mm -hmm. So okay, now that we're here, so you're gonna head to the stables and see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so the rest of you are staying in the room. Is that the idea? I'm gonna go down and just uh, take a peek around. I'd, yeah, Error. I would just ask. Do you want to come uh, with? Sure, I'll come with. I, I just kind of ask that uh, mm -hmm. uh, our little uh, Tabaxi friend to maybe suggest that she stay in the room might be the best thing while we're waiting. Or wear the mask. I think Christina. that somebody. Oh, wear the mask. I think that somebody say, needs to stay that's with what I was gonna say. Uh, Christina. Mm -hmm. I think at this point she's shown us the danger of flight risk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, who's, who's staying, staying with Festina? I can stay with Festina. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get Festina to eat something. Yeah. Okay. Good. Very great. I'm just going to go down and poke around out. Take a, take a little look around the trail. Stuff. Poke around outside. <laughs> see what's going on. Okay. <laughs> They're going to go over to the stables. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you are staying with Festina in the room trying to keep yep. her calm. And the rest of you are heading out into Feather Wand, or sorry, into Salt March Landing to see if you can find signs of your wagon and marks. And as you step out into the sort of, uh, bright afternoon sun of Salt March Landing and look around, that's where we're going to leave it for today. Mm, okay. And we'll find out next time what is going on with marks and your wagon. I want to do um, an end of session question.